Welcome back to 2D6 Dungeon. Today we are going to attempt to tackle level four. What is this place called? The Haunted. Level four, The Haunted. Um, real fast here, just before I, for, uh, I forget, because I'll be moving along here in just a moment. When we returned from town, I, I, uh, I had purchased up to eight rations. I bought three more from the, uh, from the place there up in town, but I never spent one on the stairs to go down to the next floor. So I had to remind myself somehow that we are cut down to only seven rations. So it's a very good thing that I spent those three gold on those rations. I forgot I had another bone as well. So we have we have two bones. We got some dried meat. Some I, I, I keep meaning to look into how the bandages work, and I know they're in the book. Um, and it's very straightforward, and that's going to come into play when I need to heal. But, so we're ready to get going, except for, and I know, I know, I know, can't you just get to the game? This is fun too. Uh, I always hear about people doing this, and I've never actually seen it done, and so curiosity got the better of me, and today, while I was out running a couple of errands, uh, I stopped in at uh, Office Depot, and it was a really weird experience, but um, I always hear that you can have the binding cut off your book and have them spiral bound, and I, I just was curious, so I brought the book with me, I knew I was going to be nearby, and I walked in, and I... I it was weird because I asked the guy, I was like, hey, um, just out of curiosity, I got, a, I got a question for you. Can you cut the binding off this and, you know, spiral bind it? And the guy looks at it and goes, hmm, turns around, throws it on some machine. And he goes, yeah, I've done three like this this week. And it was like, I didn't have a choice at that point. Like we had to move forward. And I was a little upset because I wanted to say, hey, uh, first of all, A, how much is this going to cost? And B, be aware that I'm, you know, I need the tops of these pages in the middle. And so it just kind of happened literally before I knew what was going on. It was just that fast. And so, uh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna talk about it just briefly here and then we can jump into the game here. So number one, um, it was only $6.46, so not very expensive at all. It's U.S. dollars uh, in 2024, whenever you see this. Is the job well done enough? Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's great. Let me tell you, this fixes the biggest problem with this. And the main reason why I wanted to, to kind of go through this was because, first of all, this book is its a little rough to use, uh, if you're flipping back and forth an awful lot, it's the one I always wanted to lay down flat, and now it can. So I have I have now solved the biggest problem, and I'm mentioning this because of the Kickstarter that is still out there. You can go to the uh, late pledge thing and upgrade your pledge to get spiral bound versions of the books and whatnot uh, through some kind of a form, and, and I, I think Toby does it all manually. But this is so superior to having it, you know, like this now. What I would have done different was told the guy, hey, I don't care how close you get to the edge, but I need to be able to read the top of these because the problem is, you know, this isn't so bad. I can see that says EXT1, right? The, the only ones that I actually really have trouble with are at the very, very, very back, not even this far in, 131 pages. These are perfectly fine, right? You can see right there, right? I can still read that, but when you get to the optional tables, it kind of cut right through the titles of some of them, and I, I just have no idea what they are now, right? So that's not so bad because, you know, worst case scenario, if I can't figure it out, it's not rocket science, but you know, if I need to figure it out, like this one is mushroom consumption table, you know, you can kind of read it, um, but you do have the, the tables index and that survived. And if you look at this, the right here, optional tables index, I know that I can just say M-U-C-T mushroom consumption table, and I can write it like with a Sharpie right down here, or get a label printer or something and put it right here so that I know that this table is that. Um, you know, I knew this wasn't going to be perfect, of course. Uh, obviously, this is a retrofit spiral binding on this, and I've just, I've just, I didn't know how much it would cost. I didn't know how long it would take. It took like five minutes. The guy was just standing around at 10 o'clock in the morning with nothing to do. The only other concern was, and, and uh, maybe I just got lucky on these, but the dice on the enemies lined up just barely correct for me. I didn't notice any enemy where I couldn't tell what die was on the left there, uh, so I kind of lucked out. Um, but like, you know, some of these are kind of kind of bad. So you've got this one here where like Leather Whip, Leather Whip shows, you know, that, that's, a, that's a four and it's cut off a little bit. And so again, I, it's not perfect, but I created a new, very minor problem and solved the major problem. So overall, it was a win for you know 650, right? So that's okay. 
Um, but uh, I, I believe if I had a second to talk, I mean, it was, it was, I didn't even like consent to it. I just asked him. Like, I, I literally walked in going, hey, I've got a question for you uh, because I don't know if you guys can do this sort of thing. And then I wanted to ask him about uh, the, the cover here. So I, I, I actually have contact paper over the, over the, the book. When I, when I got it, I put contact paper over. Just, I don't know, I like the way it feels and it kind of protects the cover. Um, and I wanted to ask him if his machine would cut through it and then bind through it. And uh, the answer is apparently, heck yeah, it does. And it didn't even care. And I don't even think the dude noticed. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a thing, but, uh, you know, I wanted to, 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 you know what, I'll do the sacrifice. I'll do the science here for it and find out. And I think if I would have let him know that he would have cut it a little bit closer, I'm sure that they have measurements that they have to abide by for whatever. I wouldn't have minded like the little, you know, it's oftentimes hidden in the, in the, in like the well area here, like where the binding is, there's, there's color coding and stuff like that, where they're doing color checks on pages, on printings and stuff like that. I would have been totally okay with all of that to preserve the title of these. But like I said, most of them are fine. It's just at the very end of the book, and I didn't, you know, the beginning is is fine as well. It's just those last couple pages, which may have been a, an issue with the guy. Maybe the guy, when he was like lining it up and put it in his little machine, didn't have the, the last like 10 pages quite perfect, or maybe he did those separately or something. But Overall, I mean, it's probably worth it because the book is so much easier to use now. And if all I have to do is write down the table names for the last couple of these at the very bottom, and I probably don't even have to do that. God intervention table. God, I have no idea what that one is. <laughs> okay. I can see the middle two letters. FV. Forced vision, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. I've never actually looked at these before. Mushroom consumption. Rare medical remedies. Well, maybe that's it. Are those that? so? I don't know. Like again, I think it was probably ultimately worth it. But that said, I know some of you are waiting to find out. You know, or waiting to place your order or whatever. I would get the the, the spiral bound ones. You know, from the Kickstarter. Uh, knowing what I know now, I think this is far superior. It's fantastic. The other thing is, is I think. And I don't know if they do this. I imagine they have different size plastic. These are plastic, not metal um, spirals here. I think it would have been pretty sweet if I could have had these two books put together. And I didn't, I didn't even cross my mind at the time. But I think if I was to do it again, uh, and I mean, it's entirely possible. I'm sure I could walk in and be like, dude, do this one for me and, and put these two together. And, you know, who knows, that might cost me another 10 bucks or whatever. Uh, but I think that'd be awesome to have a single book with everything in it. Uh, I don't have the, the, the layer, uh, book though. I only have these. So, but I think that would be really nice. I think for what I do, I would, I would prefer to have them together. And I think, you know, it would be no big deal, uh, for that to happen. But, uh, I wanted to just, just do it so that we all know. I keep hearing about it and people say they can get it done, but I've never seen it. And so, you know, this is going to be buried in a video that is, you know, going to be 19 hours long of going through a dungeon. And so it's not going to have its own video. So it's not going to be searchable on YouTube. So this one's going to disappear into ether as well. So uh, there's that. But I just wanted to, to just kind of, you know, share that. And, and you know, I, I think it was worth it. Ultimately, I do. I think it was, uh, I think it's going to be very good for me uh, when I'm not doing all of this and using the PDF and all of this fun stuff here. So I think long term, that's, that's a good solution. But ideally, you buy the real books, the real spiral bound ones, um, you know, directly from DR Games. So that said, let's, uh, let's just take a quick break here. And we are going to start level four the what is it called i already forgot haunted all right <laughs> we'll be right back all right off we go we're gonna go ahead and uh, do our starting room so we're not going to need the door die to begin with i'm gonna say it now because i'm gonna forget we're gonna send eduardo over to the left over here uh just in case i haven't mentioned it so we all know what we're looking at here we have Ta-da! Oh, you're slow loading today. There we go. 2d6 dungeon, right? Obviously, we know what game we're here for. And then just a real quick peek at the dungeon last time. That's what level 3 looked like for us. That was the crypt. want to make sure that everybody knows where we are coming from. It was it was this madness. Unfortunately, I never got to do the, uh, the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, I never got to do any kind of an offering to that god, goddess, whatever, whatever they are, the one on the top right there. I never got to do that. So, but we are sitting pretty with the Merc here in Internic or whatever. All right, I'm going to mess up every name all the time. Let's see what our starting room is going to look like here. And again, Grey Leads. I keep rolling the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, following the flow chart, I actually think the text in the book is different for some reason. Um, I'd have to go look, but I'm not going to. But right, you can see here it says divide both dice by two, round up. I keep one Lining up, you know, 2.5 becomes a 3x3 three three room, uh, becomes, you know, 9 squares big. That, that's, I, I almost don't even want to bother rolling for it sometimes because I keep doing the same. Are you kidding me? 
I've got another. I'm convinced that these last me one whole map. <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening. Um, you know what? I think let's try something a little different today. I had a feeling, and so I'm gonna. I stole this from my uh, my six year old. She'll never miss it. She didn't even know where they were. I found them. Look at that, beautiful. I also stole this from her. She had this eraser. We used to have a thing she could use it on. We got rid of it, so it doesn't even exist anymore. Whew! That one is not low odor. Lies. Lies. <laughs> All right, let's see what this first room looks like. We're going to cut over to the left over here. All right, we have, ooh, this is a fairly, oh God, this is going to be a giant room. And hopefully, watch this, I'm going to mess this up. Okay, so we'll go five by five, or five plus five plus, oh my God, a, a, what, a nine by eight? That is monstrous for a beginning room. Okay, and now this time, we're going to try to keep my math in check and make sure I don't throw a large room into what should just be a normal room. So we need to go nine this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my word. Well, let's go all the way to the bottom of the dungeon here. Why didn't I just buy these markers to begin with? I'm trying to use up all these Hexplorer at once, and I think I think the actual problem is they're, they're not like sealed. I'm sure this snap seal is is fine. I'm sure it's not wonderful. And I and you know, like your your Hexplorer box isn't like sealed in plastic, so they're probably just drying out. Where I live, it's very dry. And then eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holy cow, how many doors? Two doors, that's, you know what, that's that's terrible because I can't put one going this way. Oh my god. Um, all right, well, we're gonna start out with a massive, now I assure you that uh, this, is, this is much larger. I can't believe I can't put two doors. Wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's right up on the edge. Yeah, look at that, really, really close. Oh, I forgot my little archways. There we go. Okay. I feel like this is so much extra ink though for what we're trying to accomplish here. Although maybe you can see it better, I don't know. All right, oh yeah, I've got it all over me already. Wonderful. All right, let's pop on over to the uh, the PDF here, let me make sure I've got that ready. Where are we here? Large rooms, and we're on level four, so that's gonna be another thing to remember. We have to pull up level four, there we go. Level four, large rooms. I am positive that this is 32 squares or larger. Uh, yeah, that was just a stupid mistake I made yesterday. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Six, underground stream, okay. What does it say? There is a river here that the construction must have revealed. If you use the water, roll on L4UN. Okay, so underground stream. Cool, okay, wow. All right, and check this out. <laughs> she got a couple colors, because here I thought it would be fun. So here's here's an underground <laughs> stream for us. So we know there's water here if we need it. Now, I, right now, I don't think I need the water. So I think we can we can just kind of hang out, uh, you know, passing by this room, underground stream here. So this is uh, L4UN if I want water. This is wooden doors and it's not a unique room. Okay, so wooden doors, we like those. Wooden door, singular, because it was so big. Um, I don't know if we want to want to get any water yet. I feel like it's a good idea to have some water, yeah? Um, you know, it kind of also just gets us out of the way so we don't have to come back here. So let's let's take some, oh, you know what the problem is? is I can't write on my sheet with this with this thing. I'll have to use this guy. Uh, so, and that would take up a potion spot. Yeah, no, there's my, there's my actual problem, is it would take up a potion spot. So I can't do any water here because I only have one spot left and chances are I'm going to want to be carrying around something other than water. So we'll just, we'll just have a little reminder here. Let's see, we got, if we need water, it's L4UN. Is that just like straight up you get attacked? L4UN as, as a patrol, yeah. So that's another thing, you know, I thought about this is that we could, um, like if you really wanted to have like wandering creatures and whatnot, uh, like on, when you're backtracking, how hard would it be to just like, you know, roll and then on a, a one on a D6, you roll on the, on the patrol chart. If you really wanted to have patrols added to your game, that seems like it'd be easy enough to do, right? Okay, we have one door, two, why? oh wow, so now we got a skinny corridor here. Six tall, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Yikes, with only one door out. Oh, wow. You know what? I'm going to do this then this time. Let's, let's just see. Let's just see what this does. Now, this is not a ginormous room. And I have to remember now, we're going to pop on over to the table four. My brain is stuck on, on level three for some reason. I had such a good time in the crypt. I just wanted to stay there. All right, level four room, rooms, human ancestry for the haunted gives us a one four, the fountain shrine. Okay. We can draw a little fountain here. There's there's little water coming down. It, I can even make it blue. Look at that. All right. <laughs> little fountain at the top. Fountain. Shrine. Uh, what was that? A 1-4. I like to make sure I write down, just so I can look it back up here. 1-4, fountain shrine. Uh, what do we have here? There's a basin with a decorative spout. Well, not mine. Mine is terrible. Uh, shaped like a god. Roll on GOT1. It's full of water. So more water. You can make an offering to the god here and gain one FP. It is random exits, and yes, it is unique. So we will we will put a little star in here to remember that this is unique. And the god is on GOT1. And let's see here. GOT1 on the god table says that this is a, sh a fountain shrine. Of numero uno, Gracada. Okay. You can't read it. This is too fat of a pen. <laughs> Gracada. All right, so let's see here. So Gracada, we have Gracada stone. Or don't, don't I have something here? Forged metal. I've been packing around these forged blades for days. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Oh, yeah. See, I need this little tiny eraser. Perfect. All right, so this forged blade, maybe we only have one of them now. All right, but that's going to give us two checks for Gracada because that's her forged metal plus one. So that'll be one and two. So now look at this. We're going to have the gods are going to owe us big time. Look at that. We have seven checks now on our favor of the gods. It might be time to use some of that. So we also have to figure out how we're getting out of this room, right? This was random uh, doors. So let's see what this looks like. This is the haunt. This says this is scary. It's scarier that I'm not running into anybody. Uh, what do we got? A five-five for the door here. Archways and one stone slab. How does that work? Uh, uh, I only have one exit here, so I guess it's an archway. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to do. It doesn't really say like if there's not more than one. So there we go. We have archways and one. Oh well, it says and one of them, like as if. One of them is a stone slab no matter what, and the rest are going to be archways. So that, that answers my question. Okay, so if we do, oh, you know what I don't have? I got rid of it. My little cheat sheet for what the graphics look like. Ah, it's right here. Okay, so I had this slipped underneath it, but I can't do it when I'm cleaning the board or it gets all messy. Okay, there we go. All right, stone slab. This is only the second one of these I've ever had to do, and it's just like a filled in little square here, right? Okay, or rectangle, there we go. So we have a stone slab, so I think think I'm at a dead end, right? This looks like a place that I can't uh, I can't possibly get to unless we can get lucky and push this thing over. And does anybody remember how that works? I sure don't. It's been a while. Stone slab. Uh, let's see. They don't roll a d6 and add your discipline on a six or more. My discipline is only two. So let's see if we can get a six or more to push this stone slab out of the way. Look at that. This was the weakest, weakest lightest rock I've ever seen, right? So we're able to get through there. All right, so let's just go take a look. Let's see what's in uh, what's in this room. I don't know what to do with this thing. All right. Da -da -da. I'm so excited. I want to use my shield too, although I don't want to have it happen getting attacked over here if I don't need to. I'm just worried about filling up my, uh, my spot there. Okay, so we have a two. Well, maybe this is... Uh, let's see here. Let's go. We can go... I need, I'm stuck at three, five, huh? One, two, three, four, five. We can come all the way down. Let's come up just a little bit then. I like the way it looks better, like this. One up. Let's put the door, let's put it, we're only gonna have one door, let's put it right there. Okay, so we wound up with a three, four, five, a 15, okay? So let's see what 15 is on the chart here. Uh, a 5-5. Five, five. Didn't I just roll that? Let's see here. Uh, those are exit tables. I need rooms. 5-5. Five, five. We have... 
The Warrior's Tomb. Okay. Five, five. Warrior's Tomb. Does that mean we're going to fight some warriors? Uh, it is a unique room. Okay, well, there's that. I like having all these colors here. This is kind of fun. This is unique. Warrior's Tomb. This is the tomb of an ancient warrior. Stone swords cross the front of a red sarcophagus. The lid slides open and up stands a warrior in fur. But now, a far, I've never seen this word. Faraviata? Oh boy. Okay, so, um, yeah. All right. F <laughs> A R. Here's a word. I've just never seen this before. A V. I-A-T-A. -A. And if we can kill you, uh, S-L-T-2. S-L-T-2. Okay, now, the problem here is that we also have... What do we, oh, look at that. So we have to pay attention to the Zordian Den. There it is. There's the 60% yes that we, we need to look for, right? Uh, there's no other one of those, I don't believe, right? And it could be a large room, they said, the book said. No, it's not there. Okay, so our 5-5 five five is... A warrior's tomb. Okay, uh, SLT2, and it, it says it has like random doors as well, so we should probably figure that out while we can very quickly so that I don't forget to check them on the way out. Oh, very quickly, he says. All right, so there's a four. What is it with the doubles today? Four, four. Somebody has played this game one day, and I am certain they had a dungeon that was like five large rooms, you know? Uh, I'm sure that happens. Wooden doors. I like wooden doors. Wooden doors are easy. Okay. So that's on a six. That's right. That's a terrible wooden door, but I know it's a wooden door. Okay. So now we got to see what's up with our, with our, our, our undead warrior here. Far, where are you, buddy? There you are. Well, you don't look so hot. You are level three, so to me, that means that that's a good thing that it's not a level four creature, right? Like, it's not maybe as strong. 21 hit point. Oh, you know what I didn't do is get the dice ready like I wanted to. You know what I have? I have had these things for years, and I never end up using them. So I have, let's see, here's, it's a, it's a spin down counter. Where's the, the, like from magic or something. So yeah, from Shadowmore. So there's 21 hit points. Um... You know what we could do? We could do one hit. I like these better. They're just easier to see so everybody knows. Let's see. I guess I could do 20. That's pretty easy. Never mind. Let's do that. 12, 18, 19, 20, 20. It's only one guy. Okay. And this guy had 120 experience points. Ooh. All right. Shift plus two. Roll on BST two plus two. Sudden swoop on secondary ones and threes. So my sharp slash here is going to be minus two. That's not great, right? That is that is not great. So a minus a minus two. Now uh, locked stare d3 damage plus a special attack. Next round deduct one shift. The the Faraviata are warped humans who have been drained of life through infernal worship. Yet they return to re-inhabit their previous bodies and are now animalian, bestial, hungry for blood. Wow. <laughs> All right, buddy, here we go. I am gonna go first, round one. Uh, we're looking for that shear. That shear, that shear is pretty awesome, right? That plus four and you don't have anything against it. Secondary ones and threes, no. Oh, and this is the first combat I've ever actually had something other than my starting armor in, so it's exciting that I have a banded shield on six and five. And you know what, I wanna just pull that up real fast here because there is an armor table in the book right here. And so you can see that I have banded shield. It's like square in the middle there. So six and five. So if, if it's a primary six or a secondary five, right? So that's what we have to remember. It's minus two damage. And this guy is a neither one of those. So I don't get to benefit from that at all, nor do I get to use my armor. <laughs> Great. Just what I needed. So we just need about uh, four really good shears and we got this. Uh, here is not a good enough anything. I can't do anything with that. That is that is far too far away. Uh, so this guy needs a two and a one or a five and a one, huh? He likes to have those secondary ones. Well, you're miles away, pal. Right? That that five is far too far to go. Yeah, he's got secondary ones here. Okay. So uh, here we go, round two. And another thing, by the way, about the spiral bound book. Um, 
and the, my concern over you know where they, they put the spiral down. If you have the cards, you're not looking at the book, so it's not a concern at all anyway. All right, I got a 6-4. This is probably still no good for me with all of two shift points, huh? Yeah, I'm just too far away. Just too far away. All right, so this guy gets to attack with a 4-2. Hey, he can make that a locked stare. Oh, no. So that's a D3 of damage. Okay, so I'm going to get hit. So I have 40 hit points because I just rested up, right? Yeah, this isn't going to work the way I want it to. I'm going to have to use this, uh, you know, to erase this kind of stuff because it's small. And then right on here, so 37. I took my three damage, and I am reduced a shift point. Wow, what a jerk. Okay, so I only have one shift point this round. So I need a perfect roll. That is, oh, if I had both shift points, I could have hit him. So I miss, I miss. What a jerk. And he got a two, three. What can he do with that? A two, three? He can get to freezing claws, a D6 plus one. Oh my goodness, okay. That's some that's some nasty business. What did I do with, oh, here it is. Uh, so three more damage, okay. Thir Are we gonna die on our very first fight on level four? <laughs> that would not surprise me at all, I need that. Okay, so round four. I need some uh, some help here. I need, I need, uh, whoops, I need some help. All right, let's go. We haven't even touched this guy yet. Six, one. Well, I can get, unfortunately, to my sharp slash, which is minus two, but that's better than nothing, yeah? Ah, all because he has, what does he have? A sudden swoop on my secondary one is minus two. So at least here comes some damage. There goes four damage. Okay, so we'll drop this down to a five and eliminate this other die altogether. Now this guy also has three shift points, so this is going to be rather nasty. 4-1, so uh, what's better for him? The Freezing Claws, he can drop all the way down to the 2-1, because, uh, yeah, he rolled kind of exactly what he needed. So here comes another D6 plus 1 damage. Ow! Here we go. D6 plus 1 is going to give me a 4, a hit for 4. Oh, man. All right, well, here we go. We're down to 30 hits, so we've lost a quarter of our hit points in the absolute very first combat of this whole thing today. Fantastic. All right, so round five. All right, getting a little better. Maybe I can land a couple of these sheer moves now. Um, one, three. God, I'm rolling the exact opposite of what I what I would love to be. Oh, no, that's not. That's, that's fine. So I can do a sharp slash again. It's a D6 minus two. Uh, so I did two whole damage to him, okay. And he gets to roll on me, and again, he is a plus four shift, right? So he has, ooh, he can easily make this happen. So he can get to a locked stare, right? He can just stare me down on this one because he can adjust that by two. He, what did I say? He has four points. If he adjusted the six down to a two, yeah, he's no good. Okay, so it's only the D3 plus costs me a shift next round. What a jerk. Of course, three more damage. Man, I'm getting wrecked today. 27 HP. There it is. Well, you know, it's a good thing I was able to buy some healing potions, yeah? <laughs> okay, round six, here we are. I feel like I'm sitting too far to the left today. Maybe that's what my problem is, right? I don't have the right angle on the dice tray, so I'm not rolling the, all those ones and sixes I usually roll. Let's see, oh, I would have laughed so hard if I rolled that. Okay, so I got a one and three and I'm minus a shift, so I only have four shift. So one and three with four shifts can get me to a shear, right? Because I can roll this up two and this up two and get a three five out of it. So here comes a D6 plus four and he has nothing to say about it otherwise. Mm, so there's seven damage, right? So this is gone and we'll drop that to a two. Much, much better. Unfortunately, he has five shift points. Let's see here. What has he got? He's got a two and a four, so he can easily do the D6 plus one. I assume uh, the higher damage is what he's... Oh, that's what I'm missing, my red... Uh, that's what he wants for damage, D6 plus one. So we've got six damage. Urgh. Down to 21 HP. I bought the wrong armor. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, here we go. Can we finish this guy off? Can I roll a, a perfect shear and just be done with this guy? Let me roll a 6-6. Six, six. Bummer. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay, so I need I need six shift points. I've got five. Oh, that's 
Too bad, yeah? Okay, so instead we have to do the sharp slash, which is at a minus two for us. So we're gonna do a whole, whole point of damage to this guy. Ah, uh, then, hungry for blood, a two six. That's, that's mighty far away from him. Now he has, so he has, this is, does he have a two? Oh, he does, he can get to freezing claws just exactly perfectly. That's a bummer. So here comes another D6 plus one. Six more damage. Oh my god, I'm down to 15 hit points. This guy hits very hard. Okay, well, there's nothing that I can do. Uh, the armor I have is not going to protect me from any of this. So, too bad, so sad for me. So I've got a one, which is a bad roll, and a one. Oh good, so I completely whiffed. All right. Oh wow, and so did he. <laughs> two ones in a row. Now that those are out of the way, can I just have two sixes, please? Let's see, a one and a three, huh? Uh, again, I need, I need, so I need three and two. Oh no, I don't want that, I want this. I need two and two. Do I have four shift? I have five shift. So I can shift this up to a shear, which is a D6 plus four. Okay. Uh, ooh, 10 points of damage is enough to do it. All right. Man, that took, that took some doing, I'll say that for sure. Uh, it did give us uh, 100 here. I'm gonna, I keep using the calculator because I don't want to mess it up. 19, let's see, 1494, 120 experience points, 1614, we're getting close. That and it, it allows me to do that and go back. Because when I realize, I realize when I say these things out loud, I forget them almost immediately. 1614, okay. Now, what else did we have? BST two plus two. So where's the loot table here? BST two plus two, body search table two plus two. Right, yep. And, oh, it's two dice. Here I am rolling a single die, so hold on. So seven, eight, nine. Around the creature's waist is a silk sash. Okay. Worth 3d6 plus 30? Now keep in mind, you're getting you're getting half of that at best, right? When you go to town, this stuff is half. So it's, it's not quite that good. Oh, God, and I rolled like garbage, too. So I rolled uh, six. <laughs> so 36... I'm going to put that on treasure, I think. I like that, right? So 36 GC sash. Uh, silk sash. Okay. Uh, hanging from it is a throwing axe plus two. Ooh, I'm glad he didn't use that against me here. Okay. Throwing axe plus two. Okay, so that's fan. I love those throwing axes. Man, they saved my bacon yesterday in a fight that I probably would have got absolutely wrecked by so we managed to somehow kill this guy that guy gave a lot of experience points wow uh and now we have to roll on slt2 this is the sarcophagus loot table that's 2d6 as well slt2 is on the right and that gives us a four which is the rats have somehow oh good nothing but rat poop i have the best luck rolling for loot everybody uh, okay, so is this door locked? <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. At least we don't have to fight that guy again. Uh, no, the door is not locked. That'd have been a six. All right, so let's let's keep going forward. Let's keep going up there and see what we can find. Let's see. What did the survey say? A two and a, f or a four and a two rather with two exits. Okay. Um. Well, geez. I guess we kind of have to go like this, and then only two high, huh? So one, two, then we can put a door in the corner like so. All right, there's our new room. What do we got on the table of rooms? Standard size room, nothing fancy. Mm, two, four, that is a, oh, Gracotta Monument. Let's see, two, four. Okay, AD8, Gracotta Monument. All right, and that is probably good that we have another forged blade, although now I don't have any more. Gracotta Monument, yes, it is a unique room as well. So this, this, whole, this whole dungeon here, the haunted place, is all about Gracotta, yeah? That's interesting. There's a mound of earth here, and sticking out of it, you see the carved fate. Wait, whoa, what? Gra there is a mound of earth here, and sticking out of it, you see the carved face of an old woman. 
This is a sacred place to, to Gracata. You may apply two different offerings correctly, each for one FP. And there are reinforced doors here, which are the ones that have the line through them, right? Wow. Okay. All right, Gracata and Gracata. Gracata the core. So, so forged metal. So I have a forged blade. So now there's also there's also a metal chain that I have. That's that is that is where this takes place in my mind. So so um <laughs> so I was watching the Curse of Oak Island the other day, <laughs> and they found this chain. And one of the things that came up with this chain was some were forged, some were, were man-made by hand, and some were machine-made, and they were not forged. So I feel like I have two different forged things here. I have a metal chain, which was, per, like, not machine-made. I feel like this is not a machine-made world, right? I mean, I don't know. I haven't been that far down in the dungeon yet, you know, so maybe I'm wrong. But I think this high up, we have forged... Metal. This is a metal chain. I feel like this is forged metal. I'm, I think I'm okay with that. So let's take, let's get rid of our metal chain, which I know might actually be super useful later on, but I've been carrying around that thing for a long time. And so there's actually two separate offerings there. Uh, now with those two separate offerings, I just want to make sure I'm not messing this up here. Uh, you may apply two different offerings correctly, each for one FP. Um, I, I don't know if that like overwrites the forged metal of plus one, right? I don't know if, if I, I don't think so, right? Because the other thing, where was it? The other thing says it was a one four. Is that on here? One four. See, that also says gain one FP if applied correctly, which means I still have to get the bonus, right? Uh, okay, so I think we just got four points for Gracata here, which is actually just gonna max us out. So maybe we didn't even need all that, right? So there we go. So Gracata the core, Whatever, you owe me. <laughs> I mean, I can roll anything, right? Okay, we might actually need to use it in just a moment. Uh, so I'm down to 15 hit points, and I do not have uh, any herbs either to get myself out of this little predicament. I'm not a fan of getting smoked by some bad dudes down here, but I feel like we could exploit this Gracata thing here if, if need be, right? So the Fountain Shrine... Uh, oh, you know what I've got? Look at this. I've got a green one. Haha. Uh -huh. Check mark. Check mark. <laughs> We're done. Okay, so the um, the other rooms, those are reinforced doors are locked on a five and a six. So coming up here, is that door locked? No, it is not locked. Okay, so let's go up. Let's go. Let's go north and just see. Let's see what we've got here. Let's see. This is five and six. I just I always forget these for some reason. I've I've, did, I've already figured out how I need to write my own little legend. To have it just be a straight little line of what what things are. Okay, two exits. I don't think so. Oh, it's a little corridor though. It's a very it's a very weird. Well, maybe I do have two exits out of here. So four, one, two, three, four. Because I can put one exit here. Yeah, I can't put another exit up top because then I'm only one door away or one square away, right? So we couldn't do that. Uh, so that's all we get. So we've got this little. Oh, hey, Eduardo, hanging out down there by the river. Did you find a van or something? So we have to come out this way. We know it's an archway because it's a skinny little uh, 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 corridor. So we know it's an archway. So let's just keep going this way and find out what, what's over here. All right. Let's see. Another skinny little archway with two exits. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. So this one's going to be three long with one exit. So again, we're kind of like one, two, three with one exit. And we just keep going. Maybe we have found the back hallway. Oh, this one has two exits. I'm sorry. We found like the, the back end hallway here. So I, I have to come down. So maybe we just pop on, maybe we cheat a little bit. And if we come down, we're just gonna have to connect that room with that other room here, right? But we know this is an archway. So for whatever reason, that door is potentially locked. We don't know. Let's, uh, let's go this way. Let's just keep cruising across the top here and just see if we can't get a good idea of what's going on. And I want you to know that I tried to just cut this off over here. Uh, so that we could go a different way down the dungeon, so that not everybody's looking at the left side of their screen. All right, so we have, ooh, a 6-6 six, six with zero. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, well, guess what? Uh, so this 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 is going to here. Uh, where's an eraser? Here we go. So this this 5-6, just for fun, I just want to roll on that 5-6, just, just, just to find out. No, it's not locked. So, yeah, that's I'm, I'm cool with doing this. Let's do this. Let's just, so if this room is, is a, oh, God, yeah, 6-6, six, six, right? 
uh, that becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with zero exits. 3 and 3. So we have this giant room here. It may we, we may have thought it had zero exits, but it turns out, obviously, it reconnects back to this room that we were just in back here. We just didn't know that when we first looked in because it was kind of hiding around the corner here. There's, you know, it's like a, it's like shadowed in over there, so you just couldn't see it, right? We just, we just couldn't tell. So what, what now? Now I'm gonna do this just for fun, right? So just, just so everybody knows, right? Six times six is thirty-six, right? So <laughs> only because I messed up last time and I, I knew better. It was a thirty-size room, and I did a large room, and I felt so bad about it. It was so dumb. Uh, so we're gonna do a large room. Uh, let's see, layer level four. Let's see what we've got here. We have a, a five, six, uh, no, 11. So it's a crypt. A crypt. Okay. 11 crypt. Uh, not a unique room. No doors. All right. There are six ornate sarcophagi here. If you check a sarcophagus, roll on SLT2. For every one you check, face a patrol. If you survive, roll on L4P. That's a patrol table as well. So are you telling me that this is like, you could like farm this room, right? Doesn't it sound like, let's see, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a little, let's see here. So there's six. If you check one, roll on SLT2. So there's, there's LT2. So, you know, the, the, the potential for lots of loot in here, right? But I tend to find rat droppings in here <laughs> and dirt. Uh, SLT2, for everyone you check, face a patrol. If you survive, face a patrol. If you survive, roll on L4P. Um, this is really interesting. Now, the way this is worded, what do you mean, if I survive, roll on L4P? So rolling on L4P is, yeah, that's the patrol floor, right? That's the, that's the let's see, L4P is on the bottom, right? So nowhere on level four patrol does it say, you know, you, you, you can't uh, avoid a combat. Like you're running into a patrol here, right? For every one you you every one you check face a patrol, and then it says if you survive, roll on L4P again. So that sounds an awful lot like, like I'm, I'm I'm stuck on this, right? So so, uh, for every one you check face a patrol. If I survive, right? So let's let's check one, and then we have to roll on L4P. Is that what it is like? Uh, it, I guess maybe if, if I survive the sarcophagus check, is that what it's trying to tell me? Like, could I die? SL, SLT2, do any of these say you die? I don't think so. Discarded armor. I don't, I don't think any of these say... So, like, we're going to be in here a while if we decide to check these out. So, that's interesting, though. I like the idea of knowing that I have this room where I can come check this out whenever I want. And it's weird that it's a giant room... That gets checked on. Maybe it's a maybe it's a, you know the a holy site for the for the creeps in the haunt here, right? Maybe that's the thing. But I think for now we're just gonna let this be, right? So I think I think for now, if we want to come here and do a ton of combat, we can come back. But I'm, I don't want you know what disturbing the dead down here doesn't sound like a great idea to me. How about to you? Let's see what this room looks like across the top here. Wow, well it's gonna be long and skinny again, huh? Three. Alright, so let's do let's do it this way. One, two, three, and it's six with one exit, right? Hmm. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So let's have this room now come down right here with our one exit. And this is only an 18, so it's going to be on the regular room table here. So let's see what we've got. Regular room table, human ancestry, the haunted is coming at me with a 4-4 four, four again. Didn't we see this already? 4-4, four, four. I need new dice, man. 4-4 four, four is a, oh no, this is new. This is new on this chart, a cave-in. Didn't I have a 4-4? Four, four? No, that was something else then. Okay, 4-4, four, four. cave-in. 
That's terrible. Cave in, random door. So we're gonna have to deal with that. The ceiling has collapsed into this room, crushing a sarcophagus with slabs of stone. If there are any exits, they are completely blocked as if a dead end. You find nothing here. It says exits random. So, um, so uh, you know, for fun, let's see, wait, say that again here. Uh, completely blocked. Okay, yeah, no. So there's, there's, there is no exit here. This is... This is, com what the heck is wrong with this pen? Okay, so this is completely blocked. There's just big boulders and a crushed mummy up here, probably. <sighs> There's nothing in this room. Well, that's good. So we, we found a dead end. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the beginning room here. I like that. Okay. Okay. All right, fair enough. All right, let's see what happens here. I don't have to roll in any doors or anything. I like that. I like archways. Do we need any water for anything? I'm afraid of fighting in here, but I'm going to tell you what, I am absolutely 100% going to make sure, ooh, 3-3, three, 5-3, three. Uh, so this was 6-8, six, 6-8, eight. Six, eight, huh? So let's, let's do it mostly this way, 3-4, four five six and then we can't quite do eight tall right three we can go six by six hey guess what we just learned through the wonders of math on the dollar store calculator that that is 36 right <laughs> right there's uh three six three six right so we have another large room for reels okay wow okay all right Let's see what we're, this is such a crazy layout down here in the haunted. Let's see, we have another large room. Our, our, uh, we got a lot of three unique rooms. Oh, that was, that was a D3 I just chucked. What? I grabbed the wrong dice entirely. Hold on. All right, we have three. So this is a grand hall. Uh-oh. Last time we saw a grand hall, we got, we got smoked by a boss. Grand hall. There are evenly spaced pillars running along this large marble-lined hall with a round central burner with a metal grill. A figure looms in the dark. Roll on L4UN. Okay, and the exits are archways, so there's an archway up here, and it's not a unique room. Fair enough. Okay. Level 4 undead. L4, L4UN. Oh, it's on the right over there. Okay. Oh man, I don't want a six on this, do I? A zombie. Okay, so we're gonna fight. Oh, a zombie. That's that's the chart. Zombie. Zombies were hard. My favorite thing about the zombies, I know right where they are <laughs> in the stack here. Okay, so at least it's only one this time. It's only 38 experience points, 12 hit points. We can knock that out in our sleep. Let's go ahead and do this. Did, was, did we get anything for killing this guy? Uh, oh, that's the wrong chart. It was a large room, yeah? Level four large room. That's still in the way. Uh, no, it's just it's just we're getting jumped by a, by a zombie, huh? Okay, well, I can take on a zombie. So this guy has uh, a four, uh, which my jerkin will prevent one. So he's really a d6 plus one. Secondary ones, twos, and sixes. So my sharp slash is a minus one damage. Okay. Have at the oh god that was that was the worst. I need the exact opposite of that for a sharp slash. So we're we're way too far away. I would need three points to fix that. So now the zombie, what are they gonna do here on round one? Five and a five. Whoa! And he only has one shift point. Thankfully. Okay, so he's gonna miss at he she it whatever. It's a zombie. That ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> I rolled a three four. <laughs> okay, so I can make that a sheer. Oh, that's perfect. A sheer, right? So here, zombie. I have a plus four, and you have nothing on me, right? Secondary ones, twos, and sixes. Mine's a five. I got a six damage on you. There we go. Okay, now your turn. Three, three. Ooh, ah, uh, yeah, you can hit me with a clawed hand. What a jerk. Now, the good news is, is that clawed hand of the 3-3, three, three, right, changes to a 4-3. My jerkin protects from A damage, so it's a D6 plus 1. So I took 4 there, so I'm down to 11 hit points. I better not die to a zombie on level 4. That better not happen, all right? Basically, I need to wreck this guy right now. Okay, we have a 1-2... Uh-oh, and I only have two shift points, so there's nothing doing with that, right? 
Nope, I missed. Okay. He needs a it needs a four three. Oh god, and they got it again. There it is, D6 plus one. Oh my god, seven damage. I'm down to four hit points. So uh Uh, I'm going to have to drink an extra heal potion, I guess. Thankfully, I have two. That's plus 30 HP. Okay, so we're back to 34, but we give up our first round in round four of combat. So the zombie gets to roll again. Miss me, please. Something six. That's probably good because you're far away. Yeah, you only have one, two shift points now. I thought he had two shift points this, or it had two shift points this, this whole time. For some reason, I, I probably said one. Uh, let's see here, round five, all right, my turn. I might've just messed up and hit myself an extra time then. All right, let's see here, here we go. Our, our attack, let's do this. Let's get rid of this guy. Oh my God, a one, a one, one, I'm just gonna whiff. I drank a potion and had to stop to burp. And now the zombie gets gets a nice uh, a nice oh a real nice roll for a zombie with with three huh uh three two and they only need a what a four three so they're gonna hit again oh my god now they have three shift points d six plus one so there's six more damage all right I'm back down to twenty eight I feel like I messed up on their on their their shift points at some point but maybe not. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. It happens. Okay. Better to make mistakes against me than for me. Okay, my turn. Six hit points. We can end this with a well-placed shear. We got a five, two. Um, that's going to cost me two and three. We have that. We can do this. We can do a shear because we can roll this five down to a three with our shift points and this two up to a five with the round shift points because this is this is one tired zombie. Now all I have to roll is a two because I'm gonna get plus four because of my shear. So all I have to roll is a two, three, there we go. Okay, so we killed the zombie, thank goodness. Uh, what did this zombie give us here? 38 whole experience points, right? Wow, wow, okay. All right, let's just do this so we don't mess up. 1652. We're getting there. So anyway, what I was trying to say, and I never got there, uh, was that I, I am going to make sure that I am a level higher. Like, I want to be level five when we fight the boss of this. And if I have to come here and farm this room, good on you. I need to do it. So now we get to roll on body search table. I don't know who thought it was a great idea to go ahead and go searching bodies here of the, of the dead. You know what, though? Didn't one of these guys have, like, a plus three axe on him? So ten... It's BST 1, 10. In a satchel at the creature's side is a vial of liquid. Roll on POT 2. Ooh. Um, okay, POT 2. There's also 2D6 plus 10 gold. I love it. Roll me high, please. I need some more gold. I gotta afford some new armor. I got a 5, 6, 7. Plus ten, so there's 17 gold in there. So now we're up to we're up to 20 gold. That's good. I'm just gonna change it. 20. That's an easy, easy one for the math mathletes out there. 20, <laughs> and then POT2, it said, right? We got a potion. Now there's the very real possibility, uh, where is it? That the potion oops, uh, is very useful. POT2 could be a one or a two. Now I want it to roll low, or I want one, two, or four. How about a six? Potion of finesse. We already have one of those. I need more heals. Okay, so there's 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 that. <gasps> Ooh, and we can use that during the fight. That's plus two shift for one combat. We know we're fighting a boss, right? Okay, good, good deal. Now, uh, Grand Hall, that's one dead zombie. Checking, checking for bodies here. So you know what? I like the idea of, of bailing out of this room and coming over this way. Let's Let's come check this direction. We can always check here later. Wink, wink, and find the boss room. Let's go this way and see what we can find in this area. Okay, what have we got here? Five, a two five, huh? So it's only it's only two, two wide, huh? Two, can we get five? We can, we can just barely get five. We have one exit, straight across, and we go. 
nice and simple. What kind of room is this now? This is... No small rooms in the haunted here, huh? Four, six. What's a four, six? It's on the next page. Four, six brings us to the magic chamber. I like the sounds of that. Magic chamber. Some of you are laughing because you're reading it and you're going to go, no, you're not going to like it. All right. <laughs> so it is a unique room. All right. So it's a unique room. The magic chamber exits are archways. I, I can dig that. I like that. Okay. Uh, magic chamber. Something bizarre has happened to this room. The stone walls appear warped and twisted. You feel there is magic here you can tap into. You may charge up one scroll, allowing you to use it twice. Well, guess what, friends? I only have uh, this guy. I only have an invisibility scroll. So I'm just going to put like a X2 up here and hope that I remember what happened. <laughs> so there's that. Let's carry on. Let's go this way and see what we can find here. Hmm. A, a short little long hallway here, huh? Five. Well, it can, it can absolutely be shaped thusly, all right, without taking up too much of our room. I want to head this way, but we can make sure that, you know, we're a little bit closer to the edge so we can go up that way to get out of here, okay? So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm okay with that. We'll keep carrying on here and find out what we got. Uh, another one is a four, six, huh? So let's do this and go two, three, four, and this is six tall. So you go all the way up here, and it is only one exit. Yeah, see, there we go. That works. We'll come out right here, and here's our new room. All right, 24. That is not above 32, yeah? Somebody double-check my math. <laughs> It was just such a dumb mistake. I keep beating myself up over it. All right, so we have a 5-3. That's right on this page. A metal altar, which is a unique room. Okay. Uh, what did I say? 5-3. Metal altar. You know what? There's something freaky going on in this in this dungeon here, especially on this little haunted level room, right? Like there's there's a whole lot of a lot of worship and dark magic going on in here. I'm not so sure <laughs> that I'm okay with any of this. Uh, so what did I say that was? Five, three, a metal altar. In the center is a large metal altar. On it is an ancient symbol. Below it is some crushed petals. It is dedicated to a god. Roll on GOT1. If uh, you can make a correct offering for one FP, roll on IAUT. Okay, so um, uh, we'll, we have an offering. And then we have IAUT2, right. So we got to figure out who this is. Oh, we almost rolled the boss room. That's a 5-4. Well, how exciting. How often does that happen to people? I'm like, I'm genuinely curious that you actually roll it correctly, right? Because it's legit now. Like, we're at about 60%, I think. Wow. Okay, so we need a god. We need a, we need a god. Ray Stance, are you a god? Where, 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 where? GOT1, here it is. Okay, uh, I need a D6. Let's roll the red one here. So what god is this? And I don't even know what god I want it to be now. Maybe the Merc? Who wants the bones? The Rot? Five. Nevitazor the Blind. Okay, so this, I think, is a new one on me. N-E-V. Oh my goodness. A here. This is more fun for you guys to look at. <laughs> N-E-V-A-Z-A-T-O-R. Okay. Um. We do that and then we do that. Okay, so do we have anything for this guy? <sighs> rope? I feel like I've got rope somewhere. I do not have rope. I have a ball of twine. <laughs> is that cloth or hemp? I think so. Also, some sticks. I don't have any sticks, but I have a ball of twine I've been carrying around for a little while. Let's go ahead and throw that up on the altar. The ball of twine. All of this stuff, very useful for me to do some inventive uh, stuff here, right? But I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very smart, this one. Uh, okay, so that is uh, Nebza Tor the Blind here. So that's one check mark there. Yeah, lots of, man, I went from like almost none of these in the first three rooms. I mean, dungeon whole floors. Oh, man. My legend status tracker has been getting wiped off by my wrist. That's where that keeps coming from. Okay. I think I didn't even have the third one on there yet. Okay. Well, that was a room. Oh, what was the exits? 
I forgot. And it was a regular sized room. This is why I like doing the rooms completely first. It was a five, three wooden doors. Okay, so now, you know what? I'm gonna be pretty okay not finding any <laughs> any weird wall cheese down here in the in the crypt, let me tell you. Uh, or in the haunting, rather. Okay, so let's go up here. Let's see if we can not roll a six. One, good. This door was 100% not not locked. Because you know what? The undead, the zombies, they couldn't figure out how to work that lock. All right, so now we have a... God, another skinny little hallway here, huh? So this one is a one... Oh, and I can't go to the, the edge. So it's only uh, it's only one... One X, but five Y, right? So there's one, two, three four and five and then I've got to come up with two exits somewhere so I, I can only put an exit here and then it looks like I'm gonna I'm just gonna have to have one like right here All right well let's put it a, one more one more down just because in fact the more I think about it I should always be doing that okay because it allows me to do stuff like uh, like where you can drop a like 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 what I didn't do here, where I could drop a room down just to make the most out of the map space I have. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so here we are. Um, let's let's uh, let's uh, let's go in here. Let's just go see what we find over here now. I feel like this is going super quick. Um, everybody rolls their eyes when they look at the time stand, the the length of this video. Oh wow, what on earth? Right. So this is only. <laughs> So this one's a, a, a two, uh, and I need three doors. Now, I can't put a door here because it's it's one space away from here. That's that's not legal, but I can... Oh, man. If I put an exit here, and then an exit here, that's, 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 that's about the best I can do. So let's do it that way. And we got two exits, and again, it's these skinny little hallways. One of the first memories I have of playing like Dark Souls, no, Demon Souls, was was trying to fight in this like little skinny, dark corridor. And you're, the fact that your sword or whatever weapon you've got gets interrupted, you know, from hitting the uh, the wall is so amazing. But it's not great when you're getting chased by some skeleton that's just, like, just wrapped around the corner. <laughs> okay, so we have a three three. Oh, I have to. Well, this isn't going to be any 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 larger with zero rooms. A three. Oh my god. So it's going to be. Well, it's going to be unfortunately <laughs> uh, only eight tall. Let's see here. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight with zero doors. Are you serious? Uh, eight by two is going to be only sixteen, so it's just a regular little room. Nothing, nothing. That could have been a massive room. Okay. All right, that makes up for screwing it up the other day. So let's find out what this is here. Six two. We have a mosaic tomb. It is. It is unique. Six two. M o s a i c t o m b. Okay. My handwriting on this one was terrible. I apologize. Another unique room. Okay, mosaic tomb. This space was once beautiful and features a large mosaic showing a battle scene. Uh, kneeling at a large chest is a tomb raider. They turn and draw their cutlass. Roll on CT3. What is CT3? That's a chest. And see, this is why I have a little bit of trouble reading some of this. So so I assume that's if I survive, roll on CT3. So Mosaic Tomb, happen to have a Tomb Raider here. Look at that. So Tomb Raider. And then if we kill the Tomb Raider, we get CT3. All right, let's see here. Let's just double check that because, of course, what was that, a 6-2... CT3. Okay, so I, I essentially made a backwards E instead. That's a that's a three. I guess I almost wrote a four. CT3. If we can kill the Tomb Raider. Now, what I like about the Tomb Raider is that they probably have some gear, right? You'd think that they came in and they have some money, right? E, e, we're getting there. Tomb Raider. Right. So here we go. We fought one Tomb Raider in the past, and this is what we look like. Twenty HP, seventy experience. Now remember, I 
fully plan on being able to farm this place, this, this crypt over here if I need to. I'll fight everybody. But I have to get into the next level, or into the boss room, not only fully healed, but we might have to stop in town before the boss fight, just to make sure that we stand a chance. Uh, okay, so what does this guy have? Low duck on primary fours and fives, so my sharp slash is not great, and a forearm block on secondary ones and two. So my sharp slash is real garbage. Uh, fours and fives, yeah, so my sharp slash is going to be a negative two force no matter which way we slice it, and I do not get to use any of my armor, it looks like. Three and three, yeah, and I, I, my jerkin is a four, my shield's a six, five. I got nothing. Okay, did I forget to use my shield on the last fight? I probably didn't even check it because I'm not used to having it. This is the first time I've had it. Maybe we forgot we had it, and it was just strapped onto my back the whole time. All right, so we have 28 HP going into this fight with a Tomb Raider. Have at the Tomb Raider, and uh, we have two whole shift points to go. Oh, we are we are just shy one. <sighs> okay, so I'm I whiffed. All right, and what did they get? They got a six five. Yeah, she whipped as well. She she it's a she. We're going with a she. She only has yeah she she only has. I mean it doesn't have to be these random little pictures. Have uh, only one shift point to start. I'm not gonna lie to you, every one of these Lara Croft clones I'm killing here. You know it, I know it. Two, give me, give me a five. Give me a four or five. You know what, a six works. Okay, so we have a two six, we can shift that to a sheer, and they're, remember, they're three five, nothing, right? Primary fours and fives, right? I don't have that. Okay, so we're good. We've got a sheer coming in here, so let's go ahead and do something plus four let's let's just do let's just, just do a big six and end it nope we'll, we're gonna do seven though so we'll drop this down to a three there we go okay next up what do they what do I not want I don't want a leading three on theirs right so there's a two it's probably not good for me two five um so they only have one shift so she can't get to that three six grip twist. Uh, not yet anyway, so here goes round three. We're gonna start it off with hopefully a big 6-6 six, six roll. No, this was garbage. Um, yeah, I got nothing for that with two shift points. Yeah, too bad, so sad. I whiffed. 4-1, mm, that looks pretty good for a Cutlass Slash for a D6 of damage. No! Uh, can you see it? Yeah, barely. It's a four. That is a four. Okay, so we're down to 24 HP. It's hard to see. Now nah, you can see it. Okay, 24 hit points. Let's let's press the assault. Not like we have a choice. <laughs> let's see. Oh, I still have a throwing axe I could have used. I'm not too afraid of her, though. Five, two. Not great when you only have three shift points. The best I can do is a sharp slash, which is going to be at a minus two. So I did a whole point of damage. Go me. All right. This time. Hmm. Not liking this. Not liking this at all. All right. We got a 4-4. We got a four, four, and they have what now? Two shift points. With a 4-4, four, four, they cannot hit me. That's good news. Okay. So she missed. Round five. All right. Now mess with me with three shift. Four shift points, I mean. Watch me completely whiff here too. Let's see, so, oh, I need one more. <laughs> see, if I had one more level, we get a shift point. So I'm very excited for that. So instead, here comes another sharp slash minus two for three damage. Okay, so we're getting there. She's got nine hit points left. Rolls a four too. That's probably pretty good for her to get a cutlass slash again. Yep. Here comes another D6. We got five more damage down to 19 hit points. Man, I just don't know. I just don't know. All right, round six, we're up. Three, two, good enough to roll a shear. So that's a plus four. So there's a nine damage. Ooh, just enough to kill. Just enough to kill. <gasps> Good, 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 good. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with you, Tomb Raider lady. Anyway, what was it? Seventy experience. Look at that. So, uh, seven two two. All right. 
Seven two two. So we still need quite a bit of, of experience points to uh, to get to level ten. Uh, but and they have all kinds of stuff. So let's work backwards on this little chart here. So two d six gold. Let's do that first because it'll be easy. Two d six is ten gold. All right, so that's ten. And then a bt two plus two. Bt two plus two on the bag table is eight nine ten. You peer inside the leather bag. Ooh, you know what? I kind of want a leather bag. And three goblets. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep them in her leather bag because I'm gonna sling that. I'm gonna sling it over my shoulder or something. That is a leather bag. You know what? I like it. Leather. Oh, this pen. Leather bag. Leather bag. Three goblets worth six d six plus twenty sc here. Oh, six. Holy cow! Hang on a second. That's some dice. A throwing dart and a potion. There's all kinds of good stuff. Oh, now I come out with all the big sixes I need, right? So there's 18, 20, 29. So we have a 29. It's 29. It's 49. So 49 SC of goblets. Okay. And then a throwing dart and a potion. This thing is terrible. I can't use this thing. Throwing dart. No pluses, no pluses, no, and a potion. P-O-T-1 plus one. Um, hold on. She also has a BST2 roll, and that's right here. Uh, so let me just let me just knock this out. BST2, hopefully I don't have to do other rolls. <laughs> uh, and forget my thing. Eight. Uh, around the creature's forearm is a silver bracelet, bracelet worth 3D6 SC. So we have seven, eight. So eight SC bracelet. Eight. Oh, this thing is totally dead now. This is god awful. Okay, eight SC bracelet. All right, eight eight, eight SC bracelet, and then uh, I forgot what I rolled. Eight. Three D six SC. It is set with uh, two large MQ rubies with two. MQ MQ rubies. I like it. Two large MQ ruby rubies. Okay, that's good. Now we still have the potion roll to make, so I didn't want to forget that. That's probably the most important roll. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I keep this thing and get rid of just the pen. Okay. Potion, potion, potion. Open, open, open. Where are you? Right there. Potion, P O T. Uh. I forgot what it was now. P-O-T. See, and this is why I should have done it in order. What did I roll on? It was B-T-2 plus 2. And I got a P-O-T-1 plus 1. P-O-T-1 plus 1. P-O-T-1 plus 1. Is a 5. A potion of strength. And now we're maxed out. Okay. Potion of Strength. Okay, so what does a Potion of Strength do? A Potion of Strength? I've never seen one before. Strength, plus one damage per hit for one whole combat. Ooh, plus one DMG for a CBT. There we go. I have to write this fat marker now. I gotta, I gotta sort that out. Okay, who would have thought that they don't last very long? These uh, incredibly inexpensive, packed in with every manufactured game ever that gets shipped... Uh, you know, around the world from a Chinese board game facility <laughs> that, that, that they would be cheaply made, barely have any ink in them. They're probably drying up too. Mine, are, mine can't be very new. Well, that was a heck of a room. So so that's it for the Tomb Raider, but we still have, oh God, the CT3 here. I forgot all about it. it was, this is a chest. So prepare yourselves for some, some rocks or some rat feces or something. CT3. Nine. Some bottles have been smashed. So there's broken glass in this chest, but two have survived. <gasps> P.O.T. 2 and P.O.T. 3. So this is interesting. Okay, now we've got a problem. Uh, P.O.T. 2 and 3. So let's, uh, let's do the uh, gray one will be 2 and the white one will be 3. So we have a 5 and a 6. We have a speed and a willpower. Um, okay, so I, I can't pick these up now, right? So speed and willpower. 
Okay. Potions. So what does speed do? I've never seen a potion of speed. Magic potions. Speed. I see speed blast. It was a potion, right? Am I on the right chart? Yes, potions, items. So it's a speed blast, not, not. So that's a really good one to have, really good one to have. I feel like, yeah, that's what it said, right? Potion of speed. Yeah, it says potion of speed, not speed blast. Okay, that said, I like the idea of a potion of speed more than I like the idea of carrying around two potions of finesse, right? So we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna drop a finesse on the ground. I'm gonna switch them out, right? So we have a potion of finesse on the ground, and then we're gonna have a potion of speed, because we're gonna be fighting, we know, we know, there's a boss here, right? Plus two ATK. And could you imagine if I sucked down a potion of speed, a potion of strength, and a potion of finesse? At the beginning of that combat, I would have four shift. Ideally, I'm going to go here and farm these guys, right, until I get up to, to level five at least, so that I have five shift, because when I level up next, look at that. Level five, three shift total, and I could have a second level two uh, shift uh, or maneuver, right? We got a plan for this, right? You can't you can't go blind into uh, you know a, a dungeon. And I know I keep harping on this kind of stuff, but like in a roguelike setting, you have to use every advantage and be incredibly smart about your equipment. You cannot carry the world, and that's where I am today, right? So okay, so we've gone through this. We found some potions. We got to remember that those potions are sitting there because, of course, I'm gonna suck those down, grab these, and then hightail it to the boss, right? I mean, that's that's the move, yeah. Uh, so for now, let's go here. I guess. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be three wide by four tall, huh? So let's go. See, this is what I mean by like I can kind of like I can choose which side to put this thing. Let's do it this side. So four, one, two, three, four. And I can't really put a door over there, but this can go all the way over here. So I can kind of only really have one exit here. Let's do that. This is a, this is, that's, that's what we got. That's right. I can't, I can't really put an exit anywhere else. So let's go ahead and check the table now to find out what kind of regular room this is. <laughs> four one. That's on the next page. All right, four one is a slate hall. This is a very small slate hall. This is yes, it's unique. Wow, man, there have been all kinds of unique rooms in this place. Slate hall, unique, and what I say four one four slate pillars seem to support this dark and dusty space large slate tiles line the floor exits are archways by the way okay uh oh as soon as you step in a banshee rushes from the shadows and attacks and then roll on IAUT one um, oh you know what did I ever did I do the I did, I completely forgot. Hold on a second here. Let me write this down, Banshee. I-A-U-T-1. I just realized that I completely for oh, I A-T-2. So I have two of those, I forgot one. I got so sucked in to whatever I was doing is I never rolled on, I, I never did this one down here, right? I did this, the offering, and got all worried about this, but I never did this. So I'm going to end up doing that twice. Uh, we're just going to have to pretend that I I did it when I did it down there. I just completely forgot about it. Okay, and I mean, we might die before then, so we'll see. <laughs> so here's a Banshee. Uh-oh. Ooh, wow. The Banshee is not messing around. Yeah, this doesn't look good. Okay, so here we go. So the Banshee has 28 hit points. Um, well, we can get 24, we can get 24 out of that, and then I need four more HP somewhere. 
Oh dear, <laughs> uh, I can get I can get three there and one there. So there we go. There's twenty four uh, and plus four. There we go. So we have oh god. Okay, so resonate and they have two shift points to start too. Resonating barrier on primary ones, twos, and sixes. One, twos, and six. Okay, so they have no interrupt on me. Good deal. And they are a five and a primary five and a six. So they're opposite of my shield. I need a I need a six and a five. Uh, oh no 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 no. Wait a minute. A primary six, so on their vibro punch, my shield works. I take that back, yeah. Um, that's it though. So I have a shield on vibro punch, Whoop! which is uh, D3 plus one damage plus special attack shock, negative one shift next round. Banshees are twisted by the orbit of Psyche. They are beings who, tormented by their own voices, are sent away into the depths where they could not disturb those in the domain above. Dude, this guy sounds nasty. We just need to be really lucky here. And, I mean, we kind of are because we don't have any, um... We don't have any, uh... Or they don't have any, like, interrupts on us, right? Yeah. Primary ones, twos, and sixes. Nope, we're golden. And they're gonna give us 100, 200... Uh, Dang, not quite enough to level us. Okay, so I've got a 2-5 for my first attack. Ooh, God, yes, that is a sheer. I can make, I can roll that to a 3-5 pretty easily. Uh, so let's see what a 3-5 does here, a D6 plus four. I need to pull out all the stops on this guy. So boom, there's nine damage. Uh, so there's four damage gone. And then I have five more damage to do. So there we go, not a bad first round at all. Let's see what the Banshee does. 5-3, that's a perfect pitched scream for them. Uh, so the question then becomes, right, because they can also roll a 5-3 to a 6-4 in that. Is the I don't think I don't think that. I think they would do the more damaging move, right? So they're gonna hit me for a D6. Pitched scream. Oh, for one damage. I'm at 18. Oh, that's like threw my pen away. Okay, so 18. One day I will come up with a solution to this dry erase problem. Although I tried, I had a mechanical pencil that broke on me one time. So, you know, <laughs> that's, maybe it's just the curse. Uh, okay, and no, I don't mash it down. It just, everything is made like garbage today. So four, four, that is really good for me because I can make that, again, a sheer, a three, five very easily with only two shift points. <gasps> yes, all right, we got another plus four here. Uh, another nine points of damage. Okay, so we're gonna take this 12, make it a three. How's that? Boom. All right, now the Banshee gets to attack. A three, yeah, they're gonna be able to like roll stuff pretty easily, right? Mm, maybe not this time. That three could use both of their points to get up to a five, five, that's no good. Yeah, no, they're screwed, they missed me. There's, I've got nothing for you, I've got nothing. Good deal. All right, so this. Okay, let's do another big shear, right? Let's 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 take out our aggressions on this banshee. Keep your ears plugged. Uh oh, that's probably not great. A two one, um, a sharp slash. I can do. That I uh, they got they got nothing on me. So it's just a it's just a straight up D six. No pluses. Okay. Well, you know it was bound to happen. So there's four damage. Okay. Banshee's up. Well, I'm getting really lucky here. Famous last words. Two six again. I might still be lucky. They have two shift points. Yeah, uh, with that two, the two can't even get up to a five lead. So no, they they got they they have nothing. My turn. This is the kind of combat I like right here, right where I dominate and don't have to you know almost die. Good, good, good. A four four again. I can change that to a three five very easy. So it's a d six plus four. If I roll a two, we end it. Yes. Whoosh. This banshee had nothing on me and. We can go into this fighting the boss throwing an axe, two free attacks with four shift. Oh my god! Oh yeah, see, it's all about it's all about goosing that that starting combat against a boss. I love it. Okay, so here, let's do this now before I forget. I don't want to mess up. And plus, I have to erase everything now. Seventeen twenty-two plus one hundred and ninety experience points. Nineteen twelve. I don't want to have to fight like I don't I really don't want to have to go there and then like farm stuff nor do I want to figure out how I'm supposed to decipher the chart. I think it's supposed to be search it patrol, search it patrol, search it patrol, not search and patrol 
and then patrol, right? Or, or search them all and then I don't think it's supposed to be that way. I, th I think it's just written weirdly because, you know, there's only so much you can do in that tiny little space. Why do I keep putting this way out here when I can just put it right next to me? Okay, BST2 plus 2. BST2 plus 2, off to the tables codex, says BST2 plus 2, body search table 2, plus a 2. Oh, God, this is going to be a bad roll anyway. 6, 7, 8. Oh, not so bad. So while we found a lot of gold in the crypt, we're finding silver down here now. I wonder why that is. Are there, like, some kind of weird reason for that? No, it's just me. It's easy for me to, like, backfill and retcon what I've ran into than it is to, like, make up my own story because I'm just I'm just not very creative. Uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, around the creature's forearm is a silver bracelet with 3d6. Don't I have one of those? I, I do. It is set with two large and uh, let's see here's three. Oh no, this one's 3d6. Let me roll this. Let me roll 3d6. Uh, we have, oh my God. Okay, so how funny. That's exactly what I rolled last time. Not the same numbers, but I rolled an eight and I, I have eight SC bracelet with two large MQ rubies. So I'm just gonna put two of those. They happen to be twinsies. Maybe I just killed sisters. Maybe I found, maybe that's why this Banshee is still alive. Uh, and they're chasing around looking for their dead sibling or something, right? Or, or, or maybe it was a husband and wife or something. So, wait a second. Before I forget this, because I'm going to forget it, I need to do these IAT2 rolls. So, uh, I forgot in the other room for whatever reason. So, now I have to find it on the chart here. Why don't I see you? I, 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 I. I oh, that's why I don't see you. Let's see here. So there we go. It's, it's of course, level specific. Okay, so I have two rolls on this same chart I have to make. One of them would be the one for the, the metal uh, altar here. So that's three, uh, no, two, one. Something that has caught your eye is a stone basin in the corner of the room. It is full of clear water above it is, is a symbol. Roll on SST1. If you can place a related item to the symbol in the water, it transforms into an LQ gem. Roll on GET1, one use only. Whoa. So in, in this room, the metal altar offering to this god. Wow. Okay. What, what did I roll there? That was a 2-1. I'm just going to mark that somewhere. So 2.1. And that's interesting. So now on SST, what is that? SST. SST. I've never seen that chart before. I don't even know where to look for it. SST. Oh, symbol selection. Okay. I have no idea what we're about to find. Oh. Oh my god, if it's ball of thread and I just got rid of it. Two, a grazing animal. A grazing animal. Whoa, okay, so look, how can we exploit this? <laughs> um, uh, I don't get a gem, but let's put like, it was inset here. Let's see, grazing. This is never going to happen. Grazing animal to gem. We'll put like a little, a little altar thing here. There we go. Okay, just just in case something like that comes up. I don't believe I have anything like that. I mean, I have teeth. <gasps> I have a. I have. I have. I have. I have dried meat. Did that come from a cow? You think? I don't know. Maybe it did. I have, I have good quality leather cords. That could have come from a grazing animal. Huh. I don't know if that quite qualifies. Like, I kind of want to find, uh, and, 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 and maybe, wow, that's really interesting. I don't I mean, you could do a lot with that, and I'm not so sure. I have no proof that leather came from a cow of sorts, right? So let's, let's for now, we're just going to, we're going to back burner that and probably forget we, we, we saw it. Let's go to the, this IAUT one here. Let's get caught up on, on where we really should be here. Cause that was back in the past. We saw this already. This IAUT two is a four, six. That's going to be on the next page. That is, there's a woman in the corner cowering. I bet she just saw me fight a banshee. 
Uh, she explains she is looking for the ghost of her mother and gives you an amulet and runs off. Gain the ancestor quest. Okay. Uh, ancestor quest. Yeah, this pen is no good for writing <laughs> on this thing. Four, six. I'm going to put that in here. Four, six. So I remember we did it. Four, six. Ancestor quest. Next time you meet a ghost, roll on d6. One out of two, it's her. The amulet and the ghost evaporate. Otherwise, combat ensues as normal. <gasps> you know where I can probably find a ghost? L4P. Hold on a second. Do you think there's a ghost on L4P? No, there's not. There's no ghost on L4P. So, But remember... Remember, we're looking for a ghost. We are looking for a ghost. We, are, we need to find a ghost. Level four, just in case anybody wonders. Here we are. Um, wow. Okay, so I love the quests in this. I think those quests carry through every level. You know, like I don't lose that. I think I saw that somewhere, like on the BGG forums, right? So like that is just a quest I have now for the rest of the game until... I get rid of that, uh, uh, you know, quest, right? So, okay, I think that's super fun. All right, let's go forward. Let's keep going. Let's 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 push forward and see what we find here. Let's see, two two four two, huh? Welp, two, one two three four puts us up here. Let's go ahead. <sighs> well, you know what? Let's do this. Yo, it can only be two, huh? Wow. Okay. Well, dang. Let's um, let's do this instead. I think I think we're kind of getting there. So let's do that and this. Right? We that's still legal enough. Two by four with two exits. There we go. It's kind of a small room. I didn't see a single speaking of small room this whole little adventure, did I? <laughs> I bet when I watch the video back, I probably screwed up left and right. Okay, what is this? 5-4, that's going to be on the next page. 5-4, we have ourselves a... Z <gasps> no! Uh-oh. How funny. <laughs> uh... Uh... So... It, uh, dang. Okay, well, here it is. I, never in a million years, and, and this, this was, <laughs> didn't I just say earlier, how often does that happen? Oh my god, Zordian Den. And this is the big bad room. I can't believe we rolled this. I can't believe we rolled this. All the, oh my god. This is so bad. This is so bad. I'm not, I needed to go get a level and healed, and sucked down a bunch of potions. Okay. It's time for some inventive usage. All right, let's read this. This space is full of straw and branches as if a matting topped with animal bloody carcasses. A low growl alerts, and you turn to see a Zordian shade. Reinforced doors. Um... Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. I feel like, and we know there's stairs in here, I feel like I had such a solid plan going into this that I really wanted to see happen, <laughs> and now we can't. <laughs> and my, my plan was pretty solid. But now we're we're kind of we're kind of screwed up, right? Like I I am not in a spot to to be here. I am not in a spot to be there. So the manual specifically says the manual specifically says that that that, that fights are a fight to the death, right? So, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. I never would have thought in a million years that that would have actually happened. <sighs> it's 
So I have no way around this, right? So my problem is this, is I want to use the invisibility potion, I mean, uh, scroll, so I would have to cast it, first of all, and then to sneak out of the room. Like, oh my god, this thing's attacking me, and I disappear. But I don't think that's quite legitimate enough. I think I would have to 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 not cast this in combat because it specifically says next combat, right? So I think we're just boned. I think we have no choice but to go in here and fight. Oh my god! <laughs> I this is. Fantastic, though. I can't believe this. Uh, let's figure out what we're doing again here. Azordian Shade. Let me see just how bad this is going to destroy. Oh my god, he has 500 hit points. I mean 500. Uh, 50, 50 hit points. Uh, oh, dear me. So let this be a lesson to you. Use the rooms that you find when you find them. I should have. I should have leveled up and then explored. An agile leap on primary ones, twos, and sixes. I don't have any of those. Muscular frames on secondaries, ones, and twos, minus two damage. So we're minus two damage on our sharp slash again. I can't believe this. My banded shield is useful on the gas roar. So we'll see if I can somehow remember that. Because that's going to be minus two. So I'll say banded shield minus two. Oh my god, Zordian Shades are possessed corpses of a species of extinct lion scourged by primordial magic. They hate humans and seek revenge for the persecution they suffered in life. It roars. Oh no. Oh no. Like I'm I'm panicking here, so give me a minute to to compose myself here. Um Wow. Alright, so. Fifty HP, huh? So we can we can use this. I'm like I'm like numb a little bit, trying to figure out what to do here. So let's. I've got all these extra dice laying around here. I'm using it to buy time while my brain is scrambling for how I'm going to survive this fight because I had the perfect. I and this this is why I play roguelike games, right? Like because you can have all the plans in the world and guess what? <laughs> Anything can happen. So this is my this will be my tens category, uh, and this will be this will be. This will be the, uh, or the tens, and this will be the ones. That's what I meant. Okay. So that's five zero, right? So he's got 50 hit points. Holy, you know what? I can just track this with a number. 50 HP. Okay. There it is. 50 HP this thing has. I mean, I don't have a choice. <laughs> the, 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 the real question at this point is do I start? How hard does it hit? Oh my god! Plus two, a D six plus two. I'm gonna get wrecked. I am going to get absolutely wrecked. So like on 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 round one is the idea here to just drink a strength potion and let him attack me, and then round two drink a. Uh, A finesse potion, and then on round three to drink. Like, I, I can I drink a speed potion and then just gain from it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to figure out how I can do this because I'm going to miss three rounds and I don't want three rolls to come at me. Then I'm going to have to use a fourth round to drink, and I'm going to have to suck down four magic potions, and that's four rounds of this guy just getting to just claw me. And I, I don't think that's the answer, right? Um. I can't even like read. Okay, here. <laughs> Potions. So it would have to be instant, I suppose, right? So strength is one combat. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'm in combat, right? Finesse, one combat. Two shift for one whole combat. Oh, I see. It's, it's when it takes effect, not how long. It... Okay, I see. Um, yeah, I mean, I could do all of that. 
We have, you know what? We have a god that owes us a big favor. <laughs> Whoo! We we gotta think our way out of this, right? We've got it. We we can't let this happen. We can't let Eduardo go down because we f we stumbled into the Zordian den, and right now Gracada and the Merc. Okay, so the core. Gracada is of the earth and the rocks. She exists in the soil, drawing upon the elements. And then who else do we have? We have the Merc. I'm gonna tell you. Let's see here. So the Merc. The darkness and the unseen. He is absence. We've got to get really creative here. We've got to, we've got to, and by creative, maybe a little bit of BS, right? Now, if you look at the manual, if you look at the manual, like the actual book, like the actual rules book, where they talk about, um, you know, what's, what's, a viable thing for a god. I'm, I'm looking right now for for begging for the from the gods, a favor rather. Okay. <laughs> uh, heal all HP to your baseline. Explode an enemy of equal level. This guy's level four. You know. Gain one discipline or one precision for a dungeon level. Acquire an object needed for a task. Find a working lever. These are all kind of. I feel like fairly minor. I don't feel like a boss is somebody that I should be able to explode, right? Remove uh, a status. So what What do you think maybe? I don't feel like this is a Gracada specialty here, yeah? Right? Of the earth and the rocks, right? Like I can turn myself to stone and I have no problem with that. But I feel, I feel like Mr. Internic would be more to 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 be up to looking to to be like, you know what, this this dude needs our help. Right? He is of the darkness and the unseen. And I'm pretty sure when I walked in here, this thing saw me, and then I get to mutter a single syllable uh, word here. Uh, let's just say a, a specific four letter word to this god. You know, for maybe I can, I can disappear. Maybe the, the Zordian shade didn't see me. Maybe they thought they perked up. They thought they saw something. Maybe this is a specialty of internic here, right? I think I'm okay with all of this, right? And I, I don't have him maxed out. He's a, he's still a four. So I think that we're gonna we're gonna walk in here, and we're gonna, <laughs> you know what? Hold on. I've got a I've got and and and, and I figure that he is of the dark. I've I've got a black D six. I don't have one out here. I've got a black D six. I might have been hanging on to something like this, ebony, right? He is of the darkness, and maybe, maybe I don't have to go into this combat. Maybe I can just, like a shade, right back out the door. If I can roll, and it's a four or less, yeah? I mean, I need some help. There's no way I can win this fight otherwise. Um, I can't do anything about my, I mean, we could just use our other heal later on, right? So, as mentioned earlier, as long as you have one favor point with a god, you may call for their favor with a d6 favor roll. If your roll is equal to or below the total FP, you know what, this whole dungeon has been telling me it's about asking for favors from the gods, right? You like how I can retcon any of this, right? Uh, you gain their favor and are gifted one reward. This reward will assist your adventure in a difficult situation. This is a difficult situation. Um, right, you may call for a favor from the gods at any time. You might thrust your arms up high or whisper under your breath for their assistance. Often driven by peril or desperation to call for the favor of the gods at a peculiar at a particular time in your adventure, and you know what? Oh, man, this is so good because in my brain, I'm like, you know, I used to play D and D, and it's like sometimes the DM would just have to fudge things because that sucks, you know, like like to keep a good story like going, and not not to just keep an adventure going, but to make it a good story. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we're doing this, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna use Gracada, where I've got my six and I can't fail. Whoa. We're gonna use. We're gonna use Internic the Merc here, right? We're gonna call upon the. I need all the powers of the shadows that I can muster to not get absolutely destroyed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just gonna say. We just turn. We just dusted, right? We just. We just nothing. We just stepped back, and now we know. We know we're in trouble. This thing thinks it saw something, so I don't think... Now, the game doesn't have rules for wandering monsters, and monsters don't track us around, but I'm no fool. 
this god isn't going to grant me like, oh, you can teleport back here, level up. You know, you only need, what, 30 experience, uh, 78 experience. This god's not going to do all that for me. But the god might buy me a second here, right? The god might buy me just a minute, and this guy knows. And this is just an archway. There's no door. I'm not hiding behind a door. This thing, this thing perked up, thought it heard something in its realm. I've got a second. I've got a second, right? So I think, I think, <laughs> well, maybe I've got about... 16 to 20 seconds maybe does that seem fair do you think i could suck down maybe two potions i think maybe that in that time that perhaps perhaps we could suck down two po are these are these I, I gotta look at these again right i gotta figure out what these potions are these are instant they have to be used like in combat i think i think the ones that say instant so let me see oh this is weird here i am trying to like talk myself into not dying let me look at this now. So speed, two free attacks at the start of one, it says one combat, right? So this is just, it doesn't say like when I can, maybe I have to drink it in combat. Let me see here. Finesse, two shift for one combat. Maybe maybe I can heal up. I can drink a potion. Well, I'm not that hurt yet. An extra strength. All of those say one combat. Like I have to drink them in combat, right? It doesn't say, it doesn't say I, ha I don't have to, right? It doesn't, it doesn't say like I can't just drink it now and go charge in. I feel like I'm going to be in combat in any second now, right? So what if we did this? What if maybe we drank a speed potion and then we wound up in combat with this guy, right? Like just bam. That gives us two two things right off the bat and we can go and we're, we're just kind of in it now. We didn't really have a choice. That was able to buy us just a, a split second. We turned to just incorporeal for a moment thanks to all of our hard work and dedication to intranic the merc and we got to drink a speed potion which gives us two attacks our speed blast potion right two free attacks at the start of one combat this is that one combat right this is that one combat so having said that we get two free attacks and we attack first that's three three attacks now that sounds a lot like to me prep time for combat, yeah? Right? So perhaps I don't get to do the plan I had in mind is going here, you know, like with a beer helmet on with all my potions in there with tubes down in my mouth, sucking down four potions at once at once. But perhaps it's like a haste potion, right? We've all played games and you have a haste potion, you can do all kinds of crap. Now I've got this speed. I've got three rounds now to suck down whatever I want, right? I've got three whole rounds. Maybe now I can drink the other potions. I can drink, and I only need to drink two, yeah? A finesse potion and a strength potion, right? So let's 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 guzzle a finesse potion. That's plus two shift for the entire combat. And let's guzzle a strength potion. That's plus one damage for an entire combat, leaving me one round. The speed potion allowed me to go, and I get to go back in. I think I think we can we can there's not a haste potion, is there? No, right? So maybe I'm I'm kind of okay with this. I think I think this is I've been able to to BS myself <laughs> through this to get myself into the position I want to, not for free, not not without cost. I didn't get to go to town, right? I mean, there was things I I was gonna set this up. I'm afraid of this guy. I was going to go to town, heal up, come back down here. I was gonna have a whole other level on me. So we had one more shift point and another level two thing. We, we don't have all the luxuries that I wanted. I had this planned out perfectly. And we got screwed, and we we called upon a god to go ahead and, and help us out. So here we are now in big trouble. So I have to remember that we have plus two shift eternally here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that little two right there. So I've got I've got these little dice as reminders. Um, my sharp slash is a minus two against them, but my banded shield gives me a plus. Oh, you know what? I should put it on their thing somewhere, right? What is that on their on their gas roar? Uh, that way I can remember gas. Oh, you can't see it. Even better. Um, <laughs> gas roar. It just makes a. It just makes it. Uh, you can't read what it says though. What if I put it down there? Okay. Let's get this in position. We're gonna be doing some serious combat here. Okay. Oh my word. So I have four shift points and I'm plus one damage the whole time. Okay. That was exactly what I wanted to see, actually. So that two and that five uh, are going to be a sheer. Well, I mean, exactly what I wanted would have been a three and a five, but this is as close as I can get 
Uh, you know what? And at this point, beggars can't be choosers. I'm already calling on gods for help on this one, right? So now we are doing a shear, which is a plus four. Uh, so oh, I need this. Oh, I need all these dice. I need more dice. So a shear is this at plus four. Watch me just like wreck this guy. Oh my god, there's 10 damage right away. Okay, so he's down to 40. He had nothing for shear, right? No, 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 no. It's, it's only my... Uh, it's only my uh, my sharp slash that he doesn't care about. Okay. But he gets to attack now. Let's see how ferocious this dude is. We've got a six. Oh, and I did an extra point of damage because I have plus one, yeah? All right, remember, I'm, I'm plus one. I'm plus one damage. Plus one damage, so I don't forget. <laughs> right in front of me. Plus two shift. Those were some expensive potions, I bet. But you know what? They're going to save my bacon here. So this guy rolled a 6-1 uh, with only two shift points. Pfft, nothing. You got nothing. Oh, I hope I wrecked this dude. Okay. Two. Only because I want to make sure my little plan of, of spending all my resources. You know, I was going to say money. Spending all my, my resources here to make this happen. I got a 2-5 on round two. Again, again, didn't I roll that last time? 2-5? So here it is again. So this time it's a, it's a plus five then because of this, right? So, oof, so only six damage that time. So he's going to go down to 36 HP, right? Uh, eight minus five, 30. Wait, I've, I've messed myself up now. Five, six damage, 33 hit points. Okay, 33 hit points. All right, easy enough, right? We can do this. I'm going to write this on top so it's easy. 33. Whew. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Maybe a little overkill, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just I'm afraid of dying on these like even levels now, and then I got jumped. So the gods let me pull off my plan. So they roll a four one with two shifts. They can't do anything. No, he would need three shift. Okay, sucks to be you. Don't you wish you had a god looking over your back, huh? All right, my turn. I got a six. But keep in mind, I still have four shift points. Six, three, ooh. So, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna pull off the shear this time. Oh, I can't even read this anymore. Four, one. Uh, so now I, I don't have it this time, right? I don't have the that because I would need two for that and three for that, and I don't have it. I only have four shift. Had I leveled up, I'd have had it. Okay, so we can't do that, but we totally can do a sharp slash, which is at negative two this time, right? Because they are. Second, yeah, muscular frame on secondary ones and two. So it's a d6 minus two plus one, so minus one. So we're gonna do one point of damage. Oh, there's there's the rolls I'm used to. <laughs> you know what though? I'll say we're off to a good start. Okay. Uh, I don't know if if the two using my two attacks as a whole round is is legal or not, but I'm gonna pretend it is, right? I mean, it's just moving my arms. I can I can move my arms to swing a sword. I can move my arms real fast to drink potions. I guess. So, two, three. I'm gonna get comments on YouTube about cheating. Two, three, <laughs> I really don't know. I, it sounds legal. Two, three, ooh, uh, two. He can get to a four, three. Oh, he can't. He cannot do anything. Okay, that's good for me. Another, I live to fight another day. This guy still like way outclasses me too. I got eight, 18 hit points and they've got almost double. Five, six, huh? Uh, or six, five, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I can do that now because I only need three shift points to get a shear again at a plus four. Five, plus five. So there's, oh, God. Uh, okay, so uh, we rolled a, a one and a, and, a, and a plus one. There's our two. So 30 minus four is 26. That was a weird way to do the math, I know. Okay, my brain's not working well. I'm too freaked out. I don't want to lose this guy. I don't want to die right away. All right, so now it gets to attack. And this time now it does have three shift points. So that was our that was our warm up. With all the help that we had. Oh, it rolled a one. Let's see here. Here is that. So a three one. What does that do for this guy? Did I just like really roll incredibly poorly for this guy the whole time? Three one. Um, and they only have three shift points. So they can get that to a three, but then they have one shift point, and that can only go to a four. They can't do anything. It's, you know what? Maybe it's the Merc. It's the Merc. I'm still slightly encased in, in the God's murky shadow is what it is. It's got to be, right? Uh, my turn again. 
I've got a 3-5. Oh, no. That is a bang on sheer. 3-5. So that's going to be devastating. You know, I could have... I, <laughs> I didn't need any of these potions, did I? Um, <laughs> how funny. 3-5 uh, is a perfect... Is it, an, it is an exact strike. And in this case now, I have 4, 5, 6, 7... Right, because I get to add my shift to it. So my shift is is four, five, six. Add my plus one damage is seven. Add my four is eleven. So I roll a d six plus eleven. So let's just let's just take eleven right off the top <laughs> and drop some to fifteen. I feel like I feel like maybe my little plan was overkill. You know what? Famous last words though. You know how many times I would die immediately? Oh, one. There's a one. I would die after I thought I said something like that because of just nothing but bad rolls or good rolls for the enemy. 14 HP. Okay, we are wrecking this guy. All right, so now he gets to go, and he now has four shift. Two, one. Maybe they just have like a weird, a weird thing. Well, they can certainly pull off the claws dash. Okay, so that's a D6 plus two. So 7 damage takes me down to 11 HP. All right, and here it is. We are in round 6, and now I have so much shift. 3, I have 7 shift. They're going to make shrines to me down here is what they're going to do. I rolled a 4-2, huh? So a 4-2, can I manipulate this? How much shift do I have? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Yeah, so this is one and three. That's only four shift. I can do that even without my bonus shift. So there's another shear. So it's a it's a plus five because of my one damage is still active. So it's a d6 plus five is eight damage. Boom. Right? So that's uh that leaves what? Eight to six hit points. Yeah, I'm kind of wrecking this guy just from lucky rolls, <laughs> if anything. Uh all right, so now Zordian Shade rolls a two five. And he has what? Three, four, five shift points now. So they can do an awful lot. So let me let me let me figure this out. A two five with five shift points. Two plus the three. Yeah. Okay. So they could use one and this. So that's D three damage plus it minuses a shift for me. I think I have so many extra shift at this point. They're more interested in doing the damage to kill me. So that'd be three, four, five shift they would need, and they have that right. Uh, because that would be up three, and this would be down two. So they're going to do the D6 plus two damage, um, the Agile Leap. No, I mean, sorry, the Claws Slash, because I, and I have no armor for it. So they're definitely going to do the D6 plus two. That is the biggest damage that they can do there. That's five. Oof, that does hurt, though. Um, so that's going to take me down to six HP. So now... I am a little concerned because I am in death range. In fact, we both have six hit points. I am going to forego this round and drink my extra healing potion, which is plus 30 HP immediately. So I'm going to have 36 HP, but now they get to attack again. And they rolled, can you see the six? That's funny. It's at such a weird angle. To me, it's directly below the thing. Six, three. Okay, six, three. They can do a claw slash again. That's easy to do. All right, so D6 plus two damage. And there is, ooh, only three. Okay, yeah, I bet you're you're, you're freaking out there, boss. How is it that, that, that I, Eduardo, cannot be hit by you? <laughs> All right, here we go. And we have a three, four. I can easily make that a sheer with one shift point. Okay, so it's a D6 plus five, because I still have my plus one damage. Uh, oh, there's 11 damage right there. Holy smoke. Oh, that's right. I could have rolled a one and killed this thing, right? So it's at, it's at, uh, it's at, uh, negative five HP, right? Okay. So there's, there's that. So maybe, maybe that was all a bit of overkill. Uh, but you know, it ensured us that we will live another day. Thank you. Uh, you know, our Lord and Savior, in Internic, Inton, Internurk, I don't know, Intonurk. I don't know. Wow. Okay. So this guy's dead. <sighs> all right. <laughs> so let's see. Let's do the rolls on all this stuff. BT1. 
bag tables. BT1 plus 3. Okay. BT1 plus 3 and BT, BT, BT1 and BT2. I get, I get two rolls on this. Okay. So BT1 plus 3 and BT2 plus 3. So we'll do, we'll do, we'll do BT1. So I got a 8, 10. I got a 10 on BT1. The sack contains a silk cloak and leather gloves worth 4d6. I don't want to use this one. You can't see it. 4d6 plus 30 SC. So that's uh, 14 plus 30. So 44 SC gloves. I'm running out of room for all this stuff because this pen is terrible. I'm just going to put it here. 44 SC gloves. These are all going to be sold for 22 SC, which is like two gold. Um, and, and then uh, a throwing knife and a potion. Okay, throwing knife and a potion. Roll on POT1. POT1. Let's get that out of the way. Why, can, why do I always get lost on these things here? POT1. Magic potions table. POT1 is going to get me... Oh, that's good. We drank all of our potions. A 6, which is a potion of shield aura. Okay, that's a new one. Shield aura. I'll figure out what this does later. I'm also coming back here and picking up finesse and, and willpower, and then we're going to have to... You know what's interesting about this dungeon? is There's not a lot of edge rolls. I might not actually be able to even get out of this dungeon. That's a possibility, right? Because the only I'd have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, this is a big room. No, I, I'll have I'll have some edge rolls to to find an escape hatch. Uh, but you might not. I mean, there there is a very real possibility that you might not escape this place. Uh, okay, a, a trip to town is a luxury, not a right. You know um, that happens. So B uh, B B B B B B B B B. B, uh, BT, BT, BT2. BT2 plus 3. Oh, so we've gone over. That's 10, 11, 12, 13 on bag table 2. Uh, this seems to be the valuables from a raid, including D6MQ. Whoa, pearls. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So we got we got two pearls. I I don't have any room just because this 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 pen is too too chunky, but it was the best I could do. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use my office depot receipt. <laughs> so we found uh D6 MQ pearls. So two MQ pearls. I'll fix all this later. And then we got D3 plus 1 LQ rubies. So we got 4 LQ rubies and D3 LQ emeralds. Yeah, this guy killed a lot of people. So 3... Well, those are good rolls. How come I'm rolling well today? Okay, there you have it. There's the loot we got from that. Now, we also get 300 experience, right? Uh, so we're at uh, 2212, right? Is that right? Three. Is That was 300 experience, right? 1912, we're at 2212 experience. That makes us level five. So 2212, okay. <laughs> I can't believe that happened, that we rolled this room. Okay, so that's what we found in there. Nice and easy, no big deal. Just a, just a boss waiting to uh, to give us what for. Uh, let's go back and take a look at that room just to make sure we didn't miss anything. If you survive, roll... I forgot even this was on there. If if you we survive. So there's a treasure chest in here too. CT4 plus 2. CT4 plus 2. Oh, man. So we're already at eight. And that's a two, if you can see it. Is that better? Oh, this thing, that's funny. This thing gets in the way. Okay, so we're at, uh, uh, what did I say? 10? CT4 plus two, so that's 10. 
Uh, ten. The chest is full of paper. You rummage through it and find two scrolls. SCT three and four. Oh, man, the loot is so exciting, right? That was plus two, right? Yeah, it was. Okay. So we got two scrolls. Uh, right? SCT three and four. Where's SCT? SCT must be on the loot table. So SCT three and four. Okay, so we'll roll for three first. Oh, it's only, oh no, okay, so we'll just do gray as three and white as four. Uh, okay, so scroll gray is, is three. So SCT three is a five of surging health. Okay, and then the two is, in, is, is invisibility. <laughs> so now we have Two invisibility scrolls, one that has two charges on it. <laughs> Maybe I should just use those. Or sell them in town. I haven't used them yet. I'll sell the charged up one for double. No, I'll sell the one and then keep the double one. Okay. All right. And then, and then we've got to backtrack and pick up our finesse and willpower, right? So we got to remember that. Finesse. We never saw another ghost. Willpower. Okay. So we got those back. These are gone. Uh, I never found any kind of a... You know what we could do? We could come in here. You know what? Does that... No, I don't think that's a grazing animal. Maybe it doesn't have to be a grazing animal. Maybe it just has to be some kind of an animal, right? If we take this thing's head... Oh, man. <laughs> right? I don't think maybe it was... Maybe it wasn't a grazing animal. Maybe it was an animal. Maybe it was just an animal that it wants. And it was it was it was it was the boss of this level, and they knew that sort of thing, right? Holy smokes! What if? What if? What chart? What was that? I I A. It was two point one. Two point one on I A T U two. Two point one. Something that's caught your eye. Okay, it's full of clear water. Above it is a symbol S S T one. If you can place a place a related item to the symbol in the water, it transforms into a low quality gem. Interesting, right? SST is what? SST1, symbol selection table, and we rolled. See, look at that. It's not, it doesn't want specifically wheat. It wants, it doesn't, it's not looking for grain, I don't think, right? It's looking for a plant. A grazing animal isn't looking for a cow, it's looking for an animal. A ball of thread might be looking for a ball of thread, though, but like a tree. What do you do with a tree? You want, a, you want a, an alive plant. And a rock and a hammer. Although, I mean, hmm, hmm. I almost feel like I could cut the head off of this dang thing and be bloodied for one, two, three, four rooms. And then five, six, seven, eight rooms. I can wash myself over here. Yeah? I kind of like the sounds of that. It's basically a free gem for cutting the head off of this boss thing and putting it here. So, you know, maybe it tortured all the haunted undead in here. And maybe now... They can see that it's safe, you know, to cruise through here. I don't know how many rations I had. I think I had seven. It got worn off. Yeah, because I had, I had eight. Okay, what do we think about that? How many? What I'm looking for is the bloodied rules. How many? How many rooms before I get screwed up? Four. Oh, eight. So I, I can just make it. I can cut its head off and become bloodied, and then go. Do I put the check when I become bloodied immediately and then minus one HP until each room? Then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exactly. So I wouldn't have to lose a hit point. I could wash myself. And then we could come back here and, 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 and no, while we're here, we search for a way out. I come walking through the dungeon carrying this bloodied thing. I mean, it's a little morbid, but, you know, it kind of sounds like this whole dungeon was set up for me to kill this guy and put its head on a pedestal is what it sounds like. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. Let's see, where's G... What was it now? G-E-T... Oh, I've never seen that chart. Where is that? G-E-T. There's a gem common table. There's a G-M-T. Oh, I wonder if that's a typo. I wonder if that's a typo. Because I don't see a, 
it was G-E-T, right? I don't see a G-E-T anywhere in here. What was it? Two, 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 one, two, one, right? So if we look at two, one, something that's caught your eye, right? Uh, an LQ random gem. Roll on, get one. One use only. I don't, I don't think that that's real. Hold on a second. I have the, the chart here. That might be, yeah, there is no G-E-T-1. I have all the tables index. Oh, the tables index right here, there is no G-E-T-1. That's probably a typo for G-M-T-1, which is gem table. So G-M-T-1, let's look at that. G-M-T-1. Yeah, see, that's way, what that's, that's an LQ whatever. Let's just take our gem. That's an LQ diamond. Yeah, I think that's a typo. Where's my receipt? L <laughs> One LQ diamond. I'm gonna solve this pen problem next time you see me. Okay, so yeah, here's my receipt. You wanna see the receipts? <laughs> Here they are. Okay, so yeah, that, that has to just be a typo. Okay, so we've got a head on a pedestal. I'm covered in blood. We come over here and wash ourselves and I think that it would be a lot of fun if we had to roll on the patrol table, because if we remember that large room, remember that large room, remember what it said. It said, a little before large room, we rolled a six. It said, there's a river here that the construction must have revealed. If you use the water, roll on L4UN. And I don't have a choice. I had to get unbloodied real fast. I don't know how I'm not soaked now, but there we are. Um, some room here had a had a... Oh, it was the was it the grand hall that had like a uh, grand hall? We're looking right at it. There are even these with a with a round central burner with a metal grill. We can go dry ourselves off if we're soaked after using the water to clear off bloodied. That's that's story wise. I'm okay with it, but but we had to use this water. All that all that for a low quality gem. Watch me get murdered now because of greed. That would be the best ending to to Eduardo's story. <laughs> L4UN. That would be a lesson to us all. L4UN. Okay, so undead. We got hit with a patrol of a zombie. Okay. However, uh, let's see, we use the water. Zombie. However, I can't let Eduardo go out like that. Eduardo leveled up in there, right? So Eduardo is actually going to have. Level 5, 50 max hit points, right? As well as, he gains 10 hit points immediately, right? So he's 43. Okay, I, I'll have to work out the results of all the rest of it later, I think. Uh, 2 level 2, so it's 3,000 experience. I, I mean, that's not important at the moment. Okay. But, uh, the plus 3, plus 3, plus 2, plus... Ooh, we get a discipline point as well? We do. Plus three, plus three, plus two. Okay. Not that I know what I'm doing there, but here we are. Plus three. So we, we now have plus three shift. But more importantly, during that amazing combat, uh, we needed to do a new maneuver, right? Because we can have at most two of them. Oh my god, next level we get our third one. Okay, but we get a level two maneuver to swap out sharp slash which which i'm fine with i'm just gonna i'm gonna erase it and never look back from sharp slash okay but we before we fight a zombie we we need to properly level up right so let's let's uh let's go ahead and look at the what am i looking for Pfft. weapon maneuver so what are we going to take now we want to look in the in the middle there level two maneuvers god a flying cleft is amazing, but you know what? Sheer is pretty incredible. Hue on a 4-4. Four, four. So the problem with being too close is that is that I'm never gonna never gonna roll that, right? Like I like the 4-4 four, four because it's kind of kind of spread out, right? Like like the I mean the uh, the sheer, the three four puts me in, in in good numbers on either side. What I would like, what about a reeling slam? Because that's kind of the opposite, right? Now, um, mm, so some part of me wants flying cleft, bladed billow, and sheer. Or hue, I guess. Sheer or reeling slam. I took sheer first because it was quicker to write down. 
What I'm looking for is maybe something that's like, you know, easier to deal with, like being on the far end of a roll, right? So maybe we, maybe, maybe, I mean, a one, two is garbage though, man. <laughs> what if we take, I don't, I don't feel like I roll ones and twos all that often, right? I, I, I roll one high and one low more frequently. So, so what do we, wait, we have sheer, we have a three, five. Do we have something the opposite of that? I mean, that's kind of fair, right? A 5-3? Because those are kind of easy to get to, right? A reeling slam, which is a 5-3 reeling slam. And that's also a plus 4, right? Reeling slam, d6 plus 4. They all say d6. I don't know why. Good god! I just now realized some of those on level three are 2d6. Oh my god. Right? So I think I think that'll work. I think I think that that's our, our best bet, right? That that that, that kind of keeps both dice. So the problem with that is it keeps both dice kind of in the middle, but it does account for one rolling high and one rolling low a little bit. But it doesn't give us that like amazing punch, that like flying. Well, we can change these later. We'll see. For now, I, I think we're good with that. Okay, so we gotta deal with a zombie now. Which, you know what, is the best thing to deal with because it's on the bottom of the pile. And a zombie only has how many hit points? 12. I am not... After what I just went through, I'm kind of not afraid of you, right? And you get 38 experience. I will take that. Uh, so that'll put me at 2250. A nice round number. That's a quarter of the way to level 6. Come on. So I've also got it in my head, and I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, that... Your level should keep with the level of the dungeon that you're on, right? Like, like to kind of keep it so that you're even, right? Like, if we if we out level the place and it gets super too easy, that's on me. We could sit here and probably farm this crypt, but meh, I'd rather go to town and then hit the stairs, right? So we still don't know if we can get to town. We also still don't know if we can kill this zombie. The lifeless corpse on secondary ones, twos, and sixes. I have none of that. I am not afraid of this guy. And I get a minus one to his damage because of my uh, jerkin is a four. And he needs a four, three clawed hand to hit me. So he's really only at a d6 plus one on his attacks. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we made mincemeat of that Zordian shade. Okay, so round one, I rolled a three, six. Right, because see, I can make that a sheer, right? So I'm going to make a uh, an example out of this guy here. So here we go. So here's a d6 plus four. I love it. So there's nine damage. So it goes from, what, 12 already down to three hit points? <laughs> yes. All right, zombie, what you got? <laughs> Nothing. All right, round two. Here we go. All right, we got a, we, we, we got a one, three. Oh, how funny. Didn't I just say not to take the one, two or the two, one because of the, this never happens? Um, however, see, look, it, we, we have, we have three shift points now. Oh my God. <laughs> We can't make it, but that's so good. <laughs> yeah, we can't quite make the shear, right? Because even, even with three points, uh, we can use two. We can get a two five, and that's the best. So we missed. I'm using a great axe. Two three for this guy with what? One shift point? A two three? He can get to a three three. It can get to a three three and miss me. Look at that. Eduardo is just doing just doing well in the dungeon today. Uh, oh, there's a perfect roll. A 3-5, a sheer. Look at that. Boom. There's a sheer. Oh, you know what? How funny. Did I notice that none of those were sevens? Of the maneuvers, do any of them add to seven? I don't think so. Um, that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. There's probably no seven, and then like an eight and a six are the weaker ones, which are the ones I took because they're most common to roll, and went out from there and up damage from there, right? Like that's, that's probably very likely was a consideration in any case. Uh, so I rolled a perfect shot, so it's going to be plus six damage. I, I can't roll anything less than a one, so I just did, you know, uh, four plus my shift. Oh, no, seven. I'm sorry. So I did seven <laughs> plus five. Uh, so, yeah, 12 points of damage. We could have one-shot this guy, uh, and then 38 experience points. Oh, man, are we in good shape today. All right, 2250. 2250. Look at that. And we're a quarter of the way. We only need a thousand points to get. Is that right? Oh, it's a, oh, it's a, it's only a thousand again. And then it's 2000 and then five. Oh, that gets, oh, oh, oh. 
there's no keeping keeping up the pace I'm on. It's this is just don't die in four one or two unless you're just incredibly unlucky. A little bit of help from the designer, it looks like. Okay, so God, I can't even make heads or tails out of my sheet now. I have stuff written everywhere because this fat marker. Um, okay, so oh, we have to we have to get some loot. What's what is what is BST one body search table? We gotta drop some crap off in town too. Seven. There's a golden chain around the corpse's neck. It is worth three d six plus ten gold. We don't have a lot of money. Uh, we're gonna have to sell some gems. <clears throat> is what we're gonna have to do. Uh, so we got a ten. What? So we got a twenty. I forgot what I rolled. BST one. A golden chain. Three d six plus ten. So it's twenty gold. Gold chain. Twenty gold. Gold chain. I'm running out of room. Twenty. G gold chain. Okay, we got it. Now we're gonna have to do the not fun part. So so this is this is kind of funny. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine rolls to hit a six in this room to get out of here. No. No. <laughs> I need to go up to town. There it is. Okay, so we found an air vent in here. We found a little air vent by the excavation site, whatever. It gets us out to town. And as you know, we're going to... The, the plan is... Oh, I guess we don't even have to go here and dry off, right? We're, we're If I'm soaked, if I'm bloodied, if whatever the case may be... Well, that's funny. I could have done that over here and not had to fight a zombie. If I was bloodied over here and found an escape over here, I could get to town and cure all of that. But I wasn't thinking... What if we don't find an escape? You know that happens, okay? Uh, you know, random random is as random does, right? So now we come to town and we are no longer bloody. That was exactly eight rooms. We are also uh, healed up, right? So we are back to 50 hit points. And now we have to go do some serious shopping, right? So uh, lest I forget... Uh, we have seven rations. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down that there's a, there's a minus one... For the four, for the fourth or fifth floor here, right? Just so that I remember that we have to spend that at some point. But these, my sheets are a mess. My board is a mess. Everything is a mess. Uh, we killed a zombie. We left the crypt alone. You know what? I'm not. I'm not desecrating the the dead here. Okay. <laughs> That's, that, other than this guy, <laughs> right? But you know what? This guy had it coming. He uh, he had to have divine power come down. I don't think so. I kind of wrecked that guy. Uh, okay. So we've got to go to town, take care of some business, and I guess, I don't know if I'm going to do that uh, in the back end of this video or at the start of the next video. I'm not sure yet, and that's only because I'm under some weird time constraints today, so we'll see how this all works out. Give me just a moment. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, and remember that games are made for everyone's recreation. All right, let's just get the, uh, the hard part out of the way. I'm going to end up having to do the shopping and everything a little bit later. But I wrote down, I cleaned up my sheets here so I could read them. I got some better pens handy uh, for all of this. And I took a look at all like the regular loot I had. Uh, there was a gold chain, a sash, the goblets, bracelets. I pried a gem out of them, uh, some gloves, right? And then I'm gonna get rid of one of those scrolls of invisibility since I have one that's charged up to use it uh, twice, right? So that's, I think we're in pretty good shape. I ended up with a total of, uh, 77 gold and oddly enough exactly 100 silver pieces which is 87 gold total half of that winds up being 43 gold and five silver and so now this is where we have to do the uh the math proficiency check here right this is where <laughs> i have to look at it roll 2d6 i wrote it down too okay 2d6 we add our adventurer level right okay so we're gonna roll a seven okay plus five so we're at 12 and then we, we we deduct your precision, which is two, so we're at a 10. How funny. Isn't that what we had yesterday? Uh, or last last go? And then 10 is you did well, uh, did well and stood strong on a couple of deals. You add 10% of the sell price of the loot rounded up. So that's going to determine how much gold we have here. So we're looking at around, uh, you know, 10% of, oh, wow, <laughs> not very much, but, uh, you know, four four more gold three more silver and a couple copper it looks like. So we're not gonna have a ton. Now I'm going to, since I'm going to, to cut this weird, I've just, I've just ran out of time for the day, 
Um, I might have to, and so I separated my gems, right, because I had a mess of gems written out here as well that I've just been kind of hoarding, and I forgot that I had this one item back here, a three gold, uh, three gold piece value gold amulet with four gem slots, and to save my life, I can't remember what that is. Um, I feel like there was a gem... There was like a table that allowed me to put gems into stuff, like this thing right here, probably, because it says you place the gems and the following happens, and then I get to roll on a chart. I just, I mean, I may as well get rid of like the low quality gems, and just give them a try and put them into this thing and see what happens. I have, I have four low quality rubies and some medium quality stuff. You know what, if we do four low quality rubies into this thing that I have here, Maybe we just roll on that and see what happens. Gem combination table. I don't I don't remember the details of what that thing was when I got it. Gems in place, silver forms around them, and the item appears complete. Add 2d6gc to the value. So then it's 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 eight. So so now I have like this this uh so it's an eight. What do I do with it? So it's an eight plus three. So I have an eleven gold. Amulet with four full gem slots. They were empty, right? So that's I guess how that works <laughs> I, I, I assume so uh, maybe that gets thrown into the sale price as well But I'm gonna take a look at all the items uh, when I have some time here because I certainly don't today not right now uh, But then we're gonna go ahead and spend our one ration I'm probably going to end up buying three rations So this number will go from seven to ten to nine next time you see me I've kind of cleaned up my sheets here things should be easy to see now at least for the time being it's all dry erase So it all winds up on my hands anyway, but this has been an absolute blast. This was level four this this was the, uh, I can't believe we left the crypt alone. We could have done so much there. Uh, this was the uh, the haunting, it's called, right? Uh, so anyway, we will see you next time. And uh, yeah, up for level five. And let's see where that leads us to. All right, take care.